This is people like us. Hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe. Boom! Yeah. Yeah. I said I got to say something, baby, hand me the mic. I said I got to say something, better hand me the mic. Uh, somebody, somebody hand me the mic. Cause I got to say something, so just hand me the mic. I'm gonna really need to say something, better hand me the mic. I said I got to say something, baby, hand me the mic. So start from the beginning. Mm-hmm. We know who you are. Yes. You're so in. I'm. I was going to say I'm Daniel's little sister, and I've been welcomed back for the second time. And it's a very <gasps> special day. It certainly because is. This is the first time we've had two guests. Yes. So this is Rob. Hello. I'm honoured. What's your name and where'd you come from? <laughs> I'm Rob. I come from England. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You come from Leicester. I was mentioned on the last episode. Amy was on. I'm, yeah, I'm the, the unicorn. Man, the myth, I'm the yeah. magical creature. The man, yeah. the myth, from the down legend. South in mm. yeah. yeah. Where do we start? Oh. I mean, we so, can start with the I was huggers. Say, well, no. <laughs> let's let him get, have chance to sort of introduce himself properly. Now, as we've said, Rob is a, a unicorn among men. Um, I know I've said this before, but I'll say it again. When I started dating, I went off. Um, with my list of who I was looking for, box tickers, shall we say, us ladies know what that means, a box ticker. Rob created boxes that didn't even exist. I didn't even know they were possible. I sat there and listened to his stories in stunned silence, which is why I had to bring him here. Because I don't feel I do it justice. I really don't. So, Rob, as we said, you are a southerner. I am, or well, Midlander, Midlander. Midlander. To you, to you that's southern, Yeah. yeah. Um, you were born in London? Born in London, mm-hmm. raised in Leicester, and now live in Darlington. Yeah. And that's just the first three boxes. <laughs> that's just the first three boxes. Were they boxes you were looking for? No, 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 no. No, it was things like, um, you know, they haven't murdered anyone, mm. um, that, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, but he's absolutely you hysterical. Were, you weren't very fussy, were you? I was certainly Has, has to have not murdered someone. That's, <laughs> it's a pretty low bar to set. No, he had to be someone who got my attention, who wasn't bad looking, and you're not bad looking. Yeah, I'll do my best. And um, looking, yeah. made me laugh. That's all we needed, just them three. Just someone who you don't mind spending time with. I cannot stand sitting in a room in silence. I'm a talker. I mm. need someone who is... Not you, Amy. Oh, yeah. I need someone who is like equally as hyper as me and animated or just turn around and walk away. So, Rob, how have you transitioned to the uh, to the Disney world? Were you a Disneyer before you met Amy? I'd, I'd watched Disney films before I met Amy. Yeah, <laughs> like um, most people have. Yeah, yeah. I, I hadn't been fully indoctrinated yet. No. But um, I'm now a member of the cult of Disney. Yes. Um, and how's that treating you? <laughs> it's fun. It's, yeah. I, I still don't watch many Disney films, I've got to be honest. I'm more no. of a horror man or a drama man. But we go to Disney world whenever we... we I'd like to say we go every year. Mm-hmm. But yeah, COVID happened. But we... I've been to Florida twice now. Mm. We've been to Paris about three weeks ago, and I'm doing Florida next year. So we're just slowly getting back into that yearly cycle well, again, which is up. nice. Do you know? It's, you know the Disney thing. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about the French. Okay. Right. Oh, the French. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'll talk the kids a lot about. Before the we go any further, like yeah. we've got nothing against anybody. No. No. Right. No. But except the French. Except no. the French. We are saying this from a British <laughs> point of view. Um, I mean, we went to a common school. We don't, I think Rob's was, I wouldn't call yours common, you know. You were quite, you, quite you well say brought up. I think it's just my accent. No, it isn't. Like you said this, you were like, oh, we lived in a tiny house. It was four bedroomed. Was it? Yeah, it wasn't tiny, was it? <laughs> no. Yeah. No. So no, we're on different wavelengths there. Um, so yeah, I was going to say, but I know I've interrupted, but we've got nothing against the French whatsoever. We are just saying it from... Counter state point of view, shall we say, from how that was. So the main thing about French, right? Disneyland in France is they don't like queuing. And that's very difficult because we are British and we were taught to queue from the second we were born. Mm. And we know that someone has to be put... If they were there first, they were there first and we don't do that. I, I learned this at the airport when we landed in Paris. Oh, yeah. we, there was one, two queues being filmed to two places. I thought left queue goes to left one, right queue goes to the right one. No. No. I, I thought they were just alternating for the next available counter, like a McDonald's. And then I realised that three people had gone from the right and I was still stood there like a plank. Mm. And we had to get... I felt really rude. But mm. eventually I just had to go, no, I'm in. They do and push in, don't they? They don't have. And that, was, do push that in. was the arrival at the airport. And I thought, oh, I'm going to hate France. So <laughs> have a look. Is, is, this, is this something that we've just like came up with? Or are the French actually knowing, known for not queuing? Is that I've, a thing? I've seen on travel documentaries where, and this is just the French, 
nearly every travel documentary I've watched, they kind of swarm around whatever counter they're trying to get to. Yeah. Mm. I've seen I've seen Michael Payne in, in India happen. I've seen like Carl Pilgrim in China. I've seen whoever in Brazil. And it, it seems every country, they seem to swarm around the counter they're trying to get to. It's a, yeah. Which is very It's not very civilised at all. Yeah. Or are we the weird ones as English people that we queue? Know, that we queue. And is more fool us. Mm. Yeah. Maybe we've just got better manners. Hmm. Well, I don't even think, it's not even that they're pushing, it's the distance that like, you can feel their breath on the back of your neck. <laughs> they are like absolutely filling every available Yeah, that gets spot. uncomfortable, yeah. Don't the French are very private. Like. Don't ask people, you've just met personal questions. What's this question? So, do people queue in France? Well, I don't see what this is. So, got. you said, the, don't, don't ask French people personal questions. What did we learn in school? What is your name? How many brothers and sisters do you have? That was our French that's pretty, lesson. When is your birthday? That's pretty personal. It's supposed to be learning if that's not a thing you're meant to do. And if that's the only saying we had, mm. what can we do? Quelle la date ton anniversaire. I remember the song for that. What's that? Quelle la date ton oh, what's anniversaire. That? Posh school, innit? Do you speak French? When is your birthday? Oh. Uh, do you know any French? I just remember the song it was catchy. Bonjour. 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 Un don't toi. We, yeah. I was teaching the kids before we went there, age 18 and 30, I was teaching them how to say ha he ha he ha. What, does that and, uh, mean anything? If, if you want seconds in the restaurant, you've got to click your fingers and shout gas on. They love that in France. No, they don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. And you don't <laughs> teach that to kids who think that's absolutely hysterical to do that. <laughs> no, that wasn't the best idea you've ever had, was it? No. It made me laugh. <laughs> so I'm going to, do you know what we're going to do? Because I've been exci- like, excited to speak to you, Rob, okay. right? We're going to go down some rabbit holes. Let's do oh. it. Right? Rabbit, like holes. rabbit holes. Do it. So let's, let's, let's start as we mean to go on. Tell me... Tell me your thoughts on COVID. COVID, ah, at the time of what we've now learnt. <laughs> let's, go, let's go with where you stand now. Where I stand now is What's I, your view on the whole thing? What happened? Where are we now? What was the crack? I now believe it was a um, man-made bioweapon. Oofed. That was, I don't know if that was accidentally or purposely released, but it was released somehow. Hmm. Um, and luckily, they were developing the vaccine for it at the same time. Hmm. Wow. So you... You think it was coincidence that they were creating or developing a vaccine at the same time as it leaked? The vaccine came up very quickly for a for a disease that wasn't known of until, what, October 2019, something like that? Something like that. And the vaccine was out about nine months later. That's fast. It is. That's really quick. We can't cure the common cold. We can't cure cancer. That's really quick to get a, um, a cure for something. So, for, okay, so... The vaccine, no, not the vaccine, the virus, mm. it got out of wherever it got out of. Yeah. In your opinion, and it is just your opinion, yeah. how did it get out? I don't know. It it could have been intentional, it could be an accident. I think both are equally as likely. Um, when you're talking about bacteria and viruses, it needs one gap in somebody's hairnet. It needs one bad face mask and it's out. Mm. How do you feel, because... Do we all agree, or is it fact, that it that there was a place in Wuhan in China, mm-hmm. right? And they were studying, they were studying co- coronaviruses. Yeah. That's a real thing, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not just quite, making Quite a up. lot of high up people in a few countries have admitted to doing gain-of-function research. and That's it, gain-of-function, yeah. The fact that Patient Zero was in the city where there's a big um, viral research lab probably isn't a coincidence. No. So we're almost... Yeah, we're going I think with that. we're all on the same wavelength there. The, the, this virus started in the place where they're studying it. Yeah. So it came from that lab. I think it, so. In my mind, it's like the start of 28 Days Later, where they have the rage-infected monkeys and one of them yeah. drops some blood in a scientist's eye. It's yeah. probably wasn't that dramatic. But that, no. that's how I picture it in my head of how, how this little virus got out. I, I think it got out by accident, if I'm being honest, because... I, I would... Do I call myself a conspiracy theorist? I don't think so. I, don't, I wouldn't call myself a conspiracy theorist, but I don't. I can't see the world being sick enough to release a virus on purpose. You know, you hear all mm. these. You've probably heard all the stories online that mm-hmm. it was all a big ploy yeah. and it was put out on purpose yeah. to control everybody and all this. My personal opinion is that that didn't happen. I, you I think, think it was a genuine accident. I think it was an accident, um, mm. but. I don't, to be honest, you know, let's go all the way back. I don't think they should have been studying shit like that. I'll be honest. No. I don't think all that shit should be going on. It shouldn't, but it does. Yeah. And it Why does, for, well, it does like, it, it's chemical warfare and things, isn't it? It's like, it? do you see a kid with their 
bunch of keys on a string and they're swinging it round. Yeah. And eventually they hit their mates in the face and go, what did you think was going to happen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's kind of it, isn't it? What, what's mm. the deadly virus we can make? What's the worst that can happen if we find out? Well, you might release a really deadly virus on the world. <laughs> yeah. It's... So would you say, just whilst we're on this, if you, had, if you were pushed for an answer, would you say it got out the lab purposely or would you say that it was by accident? I know you said you're not sure, but if you were pushed for an answer... I would lean to accidental because, although it spread fast, it was very not unfatal, non-fatal in mm-hmm. the end. And I think if you're going to release a bioweapon of some form, you'd want it to do something. Mm. The effects we had, like lockdowns and stuff, that wasn't because of the virus, that was because of our reaction to the virus. The actual virus didn't really do a lot in the grand scheme of things. No. So, yeah, let's let's touch on that as well. So, like, this virus got out, right? Mm-hmm. And the entire... Tell me about sort of what happened after that. So we, we, we've talked about, like, the, how it got out, right? So let's talk about the following few months. So what, what happened? Actually, actually, in the world, what happened is um, what we were told on the television mm. is that loads of people were dying, mm-hmm. yeah. like dropping like, fr- like flies. Yeah. Um, it was sort of advertised mm-hmm. as that it was a very, very, very dangerous disease to a lot, a lot of people. Yeah. 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 Highly infectious. Highly infectious. And then the world went through this lockdown thing, businesses were shut down. Mm-hmm. Knowing what you know now, do you think that we did the right thing? Or do you think that we... I guess the question I'm asking you is, did did we do the... What we did, was it... Was it how do you say it? Was it just hysteria? Did we all just shit ourselves? I think the initial two-week lockdown was the right thing to do. do you? And I, I supported it at the time as well, because it was an unknown entity we yeah. didn't know how it was going to spread or how dangerous it was going to be but over time and the dates and the data and the figures started to come out i think the longer it went on the less scared i got of it mm. and yet we continue to lock down and yet we continue to restrict people who haven't had the vaccine we continue to say you you can't go to work you can't go to the pub you can't leave within 10 miles of your house or whatever we had shops shut down because you're a category a or a category b and it was Depending on where you live. I think after that first two yeah. weeks, an overreaction is probably the best way to put it. I don't really know why they were doing what they were doing mm. after that first two weeks. I, I have an opinion on it, which mm. is, I, I you know, you will get people online that will say that it was all a big ploy. Yeah. I'm not in that camp, personally. And again, this is just my opinion. I think it was a case of hysteria, in my opinion. I mm. think, we. I don't think anything was, anything was done in malice, I don't think we, you know, there was a big, you know, people talk about um, population control, stuff like that. Yeah. I don't believe in that. I think a, a virus got out um, and I think everybody shit the pants. And I think what happened with all of the lockdowns and all of this, I think it was mass hysteria. Mm. And I think, you know, it's like anything, it, it's, it's like just spreads like mm. a virus. But that, that mass hysteria was fueled. Because remember way back to the start of it, there were videos coming out of China of people just falling face first in the street. So that yeah. the, whoever was putting those videos out was fueling that hysteria. But then there was all the carry on in Italy as well. Yeah, that, that was they very, were yeah. saying the same thing that there they were the people just dropped down dead. Wasn't there a famous actor whose sister died and he couldn't remove her body from their shared apartment because the lockdowns were so strict? I didn't yeah. hear that. And whoever whoever was putting those stories out was fueling the hysteria. And I'd love to know who it was, and I'd love to know why they were fueling it like that. Mm. That, that 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 poor actor, he didn't choose to keep. The body in the flat. No. But whoever it was that was saying we can't even open your front door no. to take out your dead relative, that was a Well, do you not think that was because every country had different restrictions or yeah. different versions and, of their lockdown? And as I say at the time, that that was really early on. Yeah. Um we didn't know what we were dealing with. It could have been no. the new black plague for all we knew at that time. Yeah. And that's certainly what they thought it was gonna be. Now I know you're saying you don't you don't think it was, you know, um like hysteria or anything like that, I would say. I think it was hysteria. Oh, dear. Well, I, you see, I I don't. I genuinely believe that it was something that a lot of us have never seen before. When was the last time we had a war or anything like that? Mm-hmm. Do you know, like the majority of the people, and probably Boris included, didn't, you know, we've never dealt with anything like that. And maybe what he said doesn't necessarily mean it was the right thing to say, but it was certainly what he felt we needed to do. I don't, I don't like to blame him personally because obviously he was like, 
he was part of a team and mm -hmm. it's what they were advised to do. But, I mean, I said this to you the other day, the general public is like a herd of wildebeests. I'm one of them. If one runs, everybody runs. Yeah. And if you've got to stop people from acting insane, maybe the restrictions needed to be there to keep us all calm. But I do believe that all them people died. At the time, I, really I, I, do. I heard something the other day was someone saying, if if you don't believe in lockdowns, mm -hmm. but there was like a flesh-eating Ebola airborne in the air, mm. do you think we should have lockdowns or not? And on at the very start, that's how coronavirus was being sold, as it was something that bad. So yes, the first two weeks definitely should have happened if that's the information the government had as well. Um, I yeah. just thought everything after that... I've, don't let a good crisis go to waste. <laughs> they, they they had us under control when they got to, right, we, we can do digital currencies now, we can do digital passports, we can do digital health. I was going to say cash went, health didn't passes, it? Everything yeah. went cashless. Yeah, got us all on the NHS app. Mm. Good wave. They, did, they, they made the most of it to get yeah. us on their digital everything, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's mm, see, that, that, that brings it round to like the population control thing. And do when you we, believe in that? Well, the way we, that little point there we just talked about, I think I'm not, you know, it's, it's strange because I don't believe that that virus got out on purpose. Mm. I believe there was a load of fucking idiots, yeah. right? A load of fucking idiots studying this fucking stupid virus, which they shouldn't have been doing anyway. Like, what are you doing messing about <laughs> yeah. with bats? Do you know what I mean? Mm. What are you playing at? Are you messing about with this very, very contagious, nasty flu? Yeah. Like, don't, like, don't do that, fam. Like, yeah. what do you think? Like, you just said, what, what, do, you what, what do, you do you think is going to happen? Gonna happen? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Obviously, like, there's only it, accidents happen. Yeah. But, <laughs> like, following all of this, like, yeah. And again, I, I'm not bright enough to sort of understand it all, but I am hearing stuff like, like, like you just said, digital currencies. And like, there's a lot of like ways that controlling can come from it. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't think. Again, just to, not to repeat myself, but I don't think that it was released on purpose. Mm -hmm. But I do think there's been some things sort of like, well, hang on a minute. This could mean this. This could mean this. Do you know where I do have a problem? What I do find suspicious. It's, well, you've touched on one, the dying thing. Mm -hmm. I'll come back to that in a minute. But it's the pharmaceutical thing. Mm -hmm. oh, like now that bothers you, this, so, doesn't it? No, so, <laughs> no, I was <laughs> smiled Russell, straight away. Russell Brown said a lot about this on Bill Maher before he was cancelled, didn't he? You've yeah. seen that viral clip. Like, Makes you think, doesn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of money in vaccines. There's a lot of money. Mm. And there's um, some interesting people have some interesting shares in some interesting companies. Um, again, a lot, all, everything I'm about to say is stuff I've, I won't even say learned because I'm, I'm not properly clued up. But like, there's some connection between Bill Gates and the World Health Organization. Mm. And like, the World Health Organization were giving us the statistics of deaths. And then like, I've heard people say things like... Uh, 10,000 people died. But then I'm also hearing people saying that, like, no, they were dying anyway, and they just happened well, to have COVID one, as well. One, 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 well. Two things about the deaths. Firstly, the average age of death from COVID was higher than the um, expected life expectancy. Mm. So if you caught COVID, you're going to live longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I that, that, that's a bit point. that sits funny with me. Yeah. That's a bit that sits funny with me. Um the the fam that the the vaccine bit the pharmaceutical bit like some it's something definitely happened there in my opinion mm -hmm. and this is all just opinion I don't know anything to be a fact but that just don't sit right with me it okay. don't smell right but too again, many people made too much money if you're working in a lab on making a dangerous virus yeah you would also be working on the antidote you would like you know? to think wouldn't you so. And is that's, that what it's I, all I, about? I used the word answer there. If you're making a new poison, you'd want to have to cure the poison in case someone gave it to you. Mm. There is no way a big pharmaceutical company is making a new disease and not working out how the CEO could be cured of it should he catch it. This is true. This is true. Different way of looking at things, isn't it? It is. It is. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Does it sway your opinion? What part of the opinion? What opinion? I don't know. Well, like you'd said, you know, you... You don't necessarily think that it was mass hysteria. So obviously, yeah, you're not non-accidental. Something happened. Everybody got excited about it. Not excited in a good way, but scared and hyped up. 
do you think that then pharmaceutical countries saw that as uh, the company, sorry, saw that as a chance of financial gain that they already were starting on something that they already knew? Do you think they're all sort of the big wigs were all conspiring? Well, what I actually think, if I'm being honest, like this is just opportunity? my opportunity. Yeah, well, mm, yeah, that's what I actually think. I think it happened as an accident. Yeah, but I think very quickly they had something cooking mm-hmm. with regards to a vaccine. Oh, they had some ideas. Yeah. And I think they very quickly thought, well, hang on, one cotton pick a minute. We could make some money out of this. Mm -hmm. Then this is where I think the the, the waters get a bit muddied, right? And I think the waters get a bit muddied with what was on the media and how after that it was all channeled through the BBC, through the CNN, through the big mainstream media platforms. And if you you remember, there was nothing else on the telly. No, they were just banging that. on about it and how dangerous it was. And Deaths. you all have to get these vaccines and da 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 da, da. Yeah. And I think after the initial, like, accidental phase at the beginning, mm-hmm. which I, I will, you know, still, I don't think anything was done in malice at the beginning. That's my opinion. But I think once that happened and it was in flow, then I think the darkness started. Then I think there were some people going, you know, we can make a fucking fortune here. And then I think, you know, I think, well, you know let's, 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 you know, there's, there's powers that be. And at the end of the day, we sit and watch these news, is right? And what I've learned in the past three years is, and I, th- my, my opinion completely changed. You go back to 2019, when I was watching the BBC and I was watching Fox News and CNN, that to me wasn't, that was just the truth. Yeah. That's all it was. Oh, there's the truth there. Yeah. But then somebody Look. said, you, you know, these are businesses, mm. right? Maybe not the BBC. It's a British broadcast. But you do know pretty much everything is on that telly. Is the shareholders. Yeah. Like, so what you're getting fed is propaganda from a company. Well, the BBC is a profit company. business. The BBC is the propaganda arm of the British government as well. Yeah. And you start to think, well, hold on a minute, like, mm. that's not the truth. When, when that's I, just what they say. When I was a kid, everyone knew, every comic, every cartoon joked about, don't trust the media, the papers are always lying to us. When did that change? When did the media become the bastions of truth? Because I remember the joke always being yeah, that everything was a lie and don't believe what you read in the papers. Well, to be honest, I didn't get that until after the pandemic. Yeah. To be honest, you know naive it here let's call it <laughs> i was just if it's on the news that's that's like mm. god yeah. in, as far as i was concerned if the news says it it must be true must be true it must be true it's on the news mm. like that's who we're supposed to believe we are the public now B- bbc news was one of my first red pills in becoming what a conspiracy theorist now right in the, in, in t- what, what year would it have been during the arab spring the what the arab spring when all the arab countries rose up against their leaders right um, I was working in Stockton, so I was driving back and forth down to the Stockton every day, listening to Radio 4. Mm. And BBC News kept talking about the Assad regime, um, you know, stopping the protesters, stopping the rebellion. The Assad regime, the Assad re- Eventually I thought, what's the difference a regime and the government? Mm. Why is Mr. Assad head of a regime? And not? So I looked at the dictionary. No difference. No? The difference between the words is that one has a negative connotation. Huh. Other than that, they mean the same thing. So wow. why the BBC... Yeah putting their opinion on it. Why aren't they saying the Syrian government stopped the, stopped the rebellion? Hmm. Interesting. It is interesting. The, the news should be giving you an opinion. Then you should be giving you facts and let you form your own opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where it all starts to get a bit sus for me. Okay. That's when it all starts. I start to get a bit untrusting mm-hmm. about it all. You know, I'll say I'm still on the fence with everything, you know, I'm a self-confessed sheep, I'm afraid to say. I know. And I, I don't believe all of it. I believe the majority of it. Hmm. I'd, like I said, you know this. I mean, we've laughed about it loads of times because I know Rob thinks I'm insane. And, you know, I, I wouldn't say he was insane. I'm, I, I like that he has an opinion and I like that he challenges things because if I'm not going to challenge life, who will? Hmm. And we need people that do because if no one was there to challenge, how would we ever see what's real and what isn't? Like... I don't want to use like the phrase, it's now a fact, Yeah. but it, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's a fact that those numbers in the height of COVID, when we've mm-hmm. seen all them numbers of all them people dying, like it's as good as proved yeah. that they didn't die of COVID. They died but tested positive for COVID. Mm. So COVID didn't George, kill them. George Floyd was a COVID death. 
They just died. Because he had a positive test when he yeah. died. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. George <laughs> Floyd didn't die of COVID. Whatever your opinion yeah. on the George Floyd case, that was not a COVID death. No. And this, this is what rubs me up the wrong way. Because at the time, we were all told by that fucking television that... All of these people have these died millions and millions beca- of people. because of COVID. They mm. died of this killer disease. Mm. And what we now know three years later is they didn't die of that disease. Yeah. They died but had COVID. That's a very different thing. And that sits wrong with me because half of me wants to think, oh, well, they didn't know. But I don't... I, you, you see, look, this, is, this well, came from this the World the, Health Organization. Say, this is the thing. But then again, right, if we aren't... The people who... Who's the people who look after you when you're dead? Who, post-mortem, them people. Mm. Uh, yeah, the coroners. Coroners. If we're not coroners, right, how do we know for a fact that COVID didn't kill them? They might have had an underlying in health, it, you know, health mm. thing that would have killed them anyway. How do we know that COVID didn't push them over the edge? We don't. Exactly. No. Which is why you need to think to a level... Yeah, they could have died with, with anything, but we don't know for definite that that didn't finish them off. And just the wording of that, mm. have died so far from the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak. Died from the outbreak or died during the outbreak or mm. with the outbreak? They're saying died from coronavirus. Yeah. Look, I don't know the number, but what we do know is that is not true. I'll Seven t- million I'll, people did not die because of COVID. I will tell you them that was reported by f- as fact that made me lose my last bit of trust in the government. The Office of National Statistics. How many people do you think died of the flu in the 2021 flu season? I love this bit. How many? How many, do you, how many would you think died in the UK of flu in well, the 2021 flu I'm going to play season? your game because right, I yeah, know I this. Let's do it. What, was it the, about the same as it is every year, Rob? What the official number hmm. from the Office of National Statistics? Yeah, zero. Now I don't believe you. No, you're telling me not one person in the UK died mm. of the flu in that winter. Not it's one. Strange, isn't it? <laughs> it's strange how. Let's just pick out five years. Yeah, the, uh, 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. There'll have been a large number Millions. of people died of flu. Yeah. So how come in that year nobody died? Weird. That's weird, I mean, isn't it? Off the top of my head, it's probably 10,000 or so, I'd imagine, in a normal year. I bet it's even more. I think it's more than yeah. that. Worldwide, oh, I'll be loads. Mm. De- de- loads. De- definitely more than 10. Flu's the biggest killer of all de- de- people. Definitely, definitely more than 10 in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> definitely yeah. more than 100. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, they, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you, you, you know, you, you start asking, well, hang on a minute. This doesn't fucking smell right, does it? <laughs> like, hang on a minute. And if they lie about that, what else are they lying they about? about? And this that, is that's where I lost my trust in them. And I think this is a great point in time, or a terrible point in time, because from this coronavirus, right, there's never been so much distrust mm. in governments now. Literally everybody, nearly everybody... You'd hate to be the person following uh, old Boris, wouldn't you? A lot of, like, pretty much now, <laughs> everything that comes out, I don't know who to trust anymore. Mm-hmm. No. I don't know who to trust, and it brings me into the alien thing. So... Right, here we go. <laughs> Let's fuck COVID off. Aliens, right? I, before the, before the pandemic, believed in aliens, okay. right? Yeah. What did I believe? I believed that aliens um, had visited. I believe they visited, I think there's a correlation between when we've dropped like nuclear bombs and shit like that. Mm. It seems to be that there seems to be sightings around these things. There seems to be hovering around military bases. You know, my... The CERN thing as well. Yeah, yeah. My conspiracy theorist mind sort of like, yeah, yeah, it's something to do with that. But now, there's a point in time, you've all seen it. Like little things are coming out now and people are starting to admit to shit sort of thing. There's people from the Air Force saying that they've seen shit. There's proper um, government official people and military people sort of leaning towards that actually there is aliens and stuff. Now, when I first heard this, this all came out like in the last year where it started getting really, like, t- getting some traction. And I started thinking, well, finally, you know, we, we, we you know, they're admitting it now. They're admitting it now. They, they, they've always known about this, but now they're starting to admit it. Mm-hmm. But literally just in the last few weeks, my head's gone, hmm, there's an agenda behind this. Yeah. My head's like, so I now don't believe in aliens anymore. 
because I'm getting told this by the government, I'm thinking you're up to something. And if everyone says look right, you need to look yeah. left. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm thinking, what you're up to? Why American are you making this look at this? Testified that they have had aliens. Mexico government released a video of an alien. Yeah. It's laughable. Yeah, it's laughable. It's, I've seen it. It's No one's going to believe this video. No. And now, like you, I'm wondering what are they gearing us up for? Yeah. Why do they now want us to think they're aliens? Yeah. There's well, a conspiracy theory called Project Bluebeam. Go on. Which is apparently how they're going to get the next step of control over us and basically fake an alien invasion. I've heard this. And the theorists behind, who are um, talking about that believe this is them gearing us up getting our minds ready to accept the alien invasion so we're told to protect ourselves. Now, I've heard about this. You can't help but think. Mm -hmm. So, an opinion I heard online, which is one of many, is that the stuff that is being seen was actually seen, but it's not aliens. What it actually is, is government technology, very Mm. advanced military technology, that they don't want the rest of the world knowing exists. So they're saying, oh, no, no, it's aliens, that. The, the military has stuff that we can imagine. Yeah. So that's that's an opinion. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm don't. i not saying I believe that, but it's started to make me question everything now. And it's, it's unfortunate because I'm, and I'm probably the same as everybody else, because of starting with the COVID thing and everything that's followed since, I just don't know what to believe anymore. I don't yeah. know who to believe. Everything that I'm told, my brain's now like, is that full of shit? Is that... Is, the, is this some kind of propaganda? Are you trying to make me think that? Mm. It leaves you very distrustful it really does. of everything, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you believe in aliens? What's your thoughts? Oh, I do. It's, it's, it's a tough one. I mean, on the one hand, there must be. The, the universe is infinite. There has to be a life form somewhere. Of course. But on the other hand, where are they? Yeah. <laughs> Elon says he's never seen them. For at least... Sort of 1940s, we started doing alien, uh, started doing radio um, broadcasts. Mm. Those signals have been going out now for nearly 100 years. Mm. Why hasn't someone heard that radio signal? Oh, where's that coming from? This is interesting. Because we do this. If we got an alien uh, radio signal from somewhere else, we'd point our craft at it and we'd go there and see what was making that signal. Mm. So why haven't the aliens done that to us yet in about 100 years? Hmm. Do you think, well, we know Area 51 exists. Mm hmm. Do you think they have crafts in there? Do you think they have captured spaceships, aliens? No, I, I, I believe that's a real top secret, cutting edge experimental facility. I think there's things that we would see that would blow our minds. Such as? <sighs> Who knows? That they could have teleportation. Hmm? They could be going the speed of light. They, I, they could be cloning. I don't know. Hmm? But I think if we were to see what they're doing in there, it would blow our minds. Do you think? But I do think it's all from human creation. Hmm. Have you heard of that guy that was, he's done the rounds. Who's the guy, Southpaw, who did the, um, he said he worked at Area 51. I'd recognise his name. Rings a bell. I think I've heard this story. Yeah. He he was on Rogan recently. Oh, what's that guy? Find him, Southpaw. Bob Lazar. Lazar. Mm. Have you heard his story? I think I've heard bits of it. I've definitely heard the name. Basically, I'll give you a, 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 terrible version of it because I'm not properly clued up. So this is Bob Lazar, right? Uh, Wikipedia don't like him because then the second line is called a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. So Bob Lazar has, in recent years, well, not recent years, he's been banging the same drum for about 20 years. And he's saying, right, th- I'll put it in like Dalo language. He was a bit of a wacky guy, mm-hmm. right? Um, but he was bang into propulsion, mm. right? He was really clever. He had like a... He made like a Honda Civic that had like rocket engines in it and stuff. He was just bang into propulsion, making stuff move forward, Mm -hmm. right? And he's saying that he was recruited like secretly, right? And he was, it wasn't Area 51, it was something like that. One of these alien testy places, right? And he said that, and this story I'm about to tell you is, he's telling this now after he's been like let, let go from it. So I'll tell you the story. He got recruited, right? He didn't know what was going on. Um... He got taken to this place, walked to this building. He was seeing alien spaceships, and not only he, he think, "What the hell's this?" And he was employed, I guess, or drafted in to back engineer stuff that mm. found. So he was basically given, like, "Here is a piece of spaceship. Tell me how this moves forward," because he's an expert in propulsion. So they figured out that this wacky guy could figure out how this alien spaceship moved because it had no means of propulsion, but it yeah. was being pro- propelled. Long story short, 
there was some chew with his missus. His missus ended up cheating. They were tapping his phone to make it chew like it was all kosher. And long story short, because of the drama that was going on in his life, they thought, oh, we need, we need to fuck this guy off. We need to let this guy go because it's going to cause drama. Mm-hmm. They let him go, blah, 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 blah. He's now come out afterwards and said, like, like this is what's happened. I saw this, 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 and this. Some of the things that he said, he's been saying this since like the 80s or the 90s. Yeah. And like so at the time, some of the, it was like like what mate? But some of the stuff he said, apart from actually seeing the aliens, but some of the stuff he said has actually proved true. Mm. Like he mentioned this certain um, this certain like material or property that like no one ever heard of, but it's turned out that this that this exists right years later. And it's like, how did you guess that? Because it's so if mad. If you didn't know, yeah, yeah. how do you even and know? And his story's never changed. Obviously, through the years, he's been dragged through the mud, and everyone's like, "Are you a, you're a nutcase, mate. What are you talking about? But some of the stuff's like, huh, like, huh, you, uh, <laughs> you, you, you guessed that right, pal. Um, yeah. How did you know that? Do you believe this guy worked in Area 51? <sighs> Have you heard anything about him or not? I also think that's well, if... If the government got a UFO, so say Roswell was real and the government took that UFO into the research lab. Yeah. Would you not compartmentalise it a bit? Would you not take, I'm going to take this section here and that goes to that office, see what that is. I'm going to tell you what it is, but just work out what it is. Hmm. You take another piece there, that goes to that office. But you never let them know what the full picture is. That's what they did. Picture is. That's what Bob says happened. Is that what he's, right. So Bob says... Like the Manhattan Project. No one actually knew they were working on the nuclear bomb. Correct. Uh, you can't so Bob compartmentalise said it. Was all it. Compartmentalise, whatever that word is. Yeah. He was in a very... He was basically in a room with one guy. Yeah. And they were just given a little piece of metal. What's this? Basically, what's this? But he knows... He never saw it because the government kept everybody separate. But from just speaking to people who we worked with and stuff, he was under the... You know, he was told or led to believe that, you know, this is huge. And there's like loads of little teams all working on loads of little bits. Mm. And none of us are allowed to speak to each other because that's how you figure stuff out. Mm. He, I think he claimed that he went inside of a spaceship that he, at one point, was taken inside. So I have a question. Go on. So obviously, this guy, say this all happened. I'm not saying it didn't, but say it all did. Yeah. Was the government's response to him, obviously, speaking publicly about this to tarnish his reputation enough mm. that no one believed him rather than just finishing him off? Do you see what, what I mean? People and that's have what been they've done. assassinated for a lot less. That, uh, well, <laughs> this is what I'm thinking. Like People have been assassinated for a lot less. So why did they decide that he was allowed to speak about these things? And as I say, part of me really actually believes him. So I'm not for one second saying that that didn't happen. Mm. Yeah, I'm inclined to believe that eh, there's coincidences and there's not coincidences. But why just tarnish his reputation? Why not? do something more? Maybe it's a case of, for example, when, when Dr. Kelly was assassinated over here, it's because he spoke out about the lies that took us into the Second Iraq War. Mm. And that was always going to come out one day anyway through declassified documents. Mm. Maybe in this case, they don't want to turn into a martyr ah. or a figure for worship. They just want to be rated. They, they, they want to shut him up. They, they'd love to knock him off, I'm sure. But yeah. they turn him into a martyr if they do. Well, what they actually did is he... I think he studied somewhere or he had some credentials, blah, blah, blah. And they, I say whoever they are, Mm. there was something, whoever they are, yeah. yeah, Something was put out that he was lying about things that he said, that he didn't actually work in this particular place and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, down the line, it was proven that he actually did (laughs) work there, you know? Yeah. There seems to have been some kind of collusion or some kind of ploy to discredit his credentials, his story, his past, but that that has now been proved the, otherwise. The fact the government care makes me believe him a little bit more. Because hmm. if I went on Joe, if I went on Joe Rogan and said I was in Area Fifty One, I saw a spaceship, the government would give a monkey. So am I. Mm. Hmm. The fact they're going after him makes me believe him a little more. Yeah. Oh, how very interesting, though. Yeah, it's it's a really good uh, documentary, actually. A bit like I'm going to mention this again. A bit like Russell Brand, a bit like Alex Jones. The fact that everyone's working together to silence these people mm. makes me think maybe they are saying something that's inconvenient to the powers that be here. We mentioned Russell a couple of times, so let's touch on it. He's the hot topic right now. Yeah. He's the hot topic. What's going on with Russell? So, so, so for you, Amy. What's going on with uh, Do Russell? Do you know what? Right. How, how many times have I said this over the past two weeks? 
I am on Russell's side 110%. Why now are these things coming out? Do you not think this is absolutely convenient? You know, he's he knows something. He's got some information about something and they're doing this exact thing. They are trying to discredit him, aren't they? And the thing is, you know, everything they're saying, it's 20 odd years ago. Why now? Why now? Do you think he raped anybody? No, I do not. Yeah. And you know, speaking as a woman, can I just say, he's always been an open book. And quite frankly, I'd be frigging flattered. I would <laughs> be saying anything. Look at him. Bloody hell. Four. 20 years ago. Four. Oh. He was a sex icon. And he never hid it. No. You know, he wasn't someone who was like, oh, you know, come over here. I'm not going to do anything. Oh, my God. He's always been... An open book. <laughs> Look at him. You can't say that bloke raped you. They would have flung themselves at him. I just, I don't believe it for a second. So why do you think this has happened then? I think he knows something. Exactly what we've said just then. I believe someone, well, not someone. You think he's banging the wrong drum and upsetting yeah. the wrong people? It's so exactly that. to get the clip of him on Bill Maher where he came out, he basically came out and said, here's a load of facts about being convenient. Mm. People believe that's the reason why they've gone after him is he just put all this out in the public. Which one's um, this? What are we talking about? Oh, fuck. And this happened. Is it that top one? Yeah, it's discussing the clip. There's going to be a lot of bump before he starts. It's, it's literally like a minute clip. Real time That's with Bill That's probably Matt. it there, yeah. When was this? Good question. So what are we watching here? What is this? So he went on the Bill Maher show and gave some inconvenient truths. Okay. Let's have a listen. Uh, Turn this if off. you need an opioid, Purdue Pharma will sell you them at a reasonable price, whether you need them or not. <laughs> <laughs> I should add, yeah. these opioids can be quite Moorish and even some would say addictive. So do be cautious. <laughs> and, and you were there. You, you, were, you were there, right? I mean, and there was a time where I did become a little bit dependent on heroin. Thankfully, Purdue were not operating in my country, so I may not be here now, and I'm very grateful that I am. <laughs> well, and we are too. And there, there's something called hillbilly heroin. That's, ah. that's called Oxycontin. Yes. And that's what they were pushing. But I just, in October 2020, when the Justice Department announced Purdue Pharma pleaded guilty to felony charges of defrauding federal agencies, violating anti-kickback laws, marketing op opioids to hundreds of doctors that it suspected were writing illegal prescriptions, and then lying about it to the DEA. <laughs> so they got slapped with an $8.3 billion fine. I'm just, my last question is just the cognitive dissonance that I see, that people see, oh my God, the pharmaceutical industry is capable of doing this. But when it comes to COVID, no questions asked. It just does seem weird. Bill, if I may well, say- Well, let him answer that. Oh, well, let John do it. Well, yeah, you have a turn. Yeah. See if you- <laughs> Let's kill that child I'll part. This I think- Get the words Skip it ahead a bit. He's got a bit of paper in his hands. This could be. Oh no, no. He came on. He came to a Bill Maher show, and he um he he had a sheet of paper. He said, "Here's some facts about being convenient." And he talked about how much money Pfizer had made every day, how much money made off the vaccine, mm. the fact the American public had paid for the research, but Pfizer kept the profits. And in mm. Germany, the same thing happened with a different company. Yeah. And there's a few more facts in there. And the whole time, Bill was, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next guest, um, these next question, and he's trying to shut him up and. A lot of people believe that clip is why the they've now got out. Well, at least 40 new big pharma yeah. billionaires. Pharmaceutical corporations like Moderna and Pfizer made $1,000 of profit every second from the COVID-19 <laughs> vaccine. More than two-thirds of Congress received campaign funding from pharmaceutical companies in the 2020 election. Pfizer chairman Albert Baller told Time magazine in July 2020 that his company was developing a COVID vaccine for the good of humanity, not for money. And of course, Pfizer made $100 right. billion dollars okay. in profit right. in 2022. Right. You, the American public, funded the development. Of that. When it came to the profits, they took the profits. When it came to the funding, you paid for the funding. All I'm querying <laughs> is this. Yes. Is if you have an economic system in which pharmaceutical companies benefit hugely from medical emergencies, where a military industrial okay. complex benefits from war, where an energy companies benefit from energy crises, you are going to He's generate right. states of perpetual crisis yes. for the interests of ordinary people. Well, yes. God is well, amazing, isn't he? Do you know what? You can't, you can't be saying that in public when you've got a big following. <laughs> well, have any of you listened to his Rumble show? No, no, I haven't watched so that I, I've, yet. I've been listening I, to I started it. watching him on YouTube when he had the Trues, which was the Truthful News, mm -hmm. and that's developed into kind of a 
almost like podcast style shorts. I haven't seen one rumble yet. Though. Well, listen, you think that was it? Imagine that, but for an hour and ten minutes, five times a week. Mm. Yeah. So for the past however many months, maybe a year, he's had a show on Rumble called Stay Free with Russell Brand. And what it is, I've been listening to it for a year now, mm-hmm. five days a week, four days a week. And he, for literally, for an hour and 10 minutes, and he's not just banging on, like, just, just saying his opinion. He's pulling up facts. He's got real, real backup. Yeah. And he's not just a pharmaceutical company, everything that's yeah. corrupt. He's going through politics. He's going through war. Like, the way he explains as why the Ukraine war is going on and how it's all a big... We're all getting blagged, according to him, saying that, you know, poor Ukrainians, this isn't it. Then he's basically saying, no, America have started this. And he knows this. He's been inside the machine. Yeah, you don't, it's you a money-making machine. You're mm. not the ex-husband of Katie Perth that being inside that Hollywood machine. Mm. He's seen what happens behind closed doors. And it brings us to why this has happened. And as you've just said, Amy, mm-hmm. as a, um, in my opinion, that's all it is, Russell might be a rapist. I don't think he is. I don't think uh, he I, is. I think Russell... We don't know, but no, I don't believe it. I think Russell was um, a, a sex icon. Yeah. I think he was a superstar. I think he was, was a heartthrob. Um, shagger of the year, three years running, Yeah, apparently. Three years running. Um, God, you'd be frigging honoured. Yeah. What are they doing? Twisting on about it. And I think since then he's transitioned and I think he now makes his money mm. from basically shining a light on everything that's cr- you know, crooked. And it's crooked. a cult following, isn't it? Well, yeah. and It's, it's the rise of the conspiracy I, theorists. I think it started off as a small little mm-hmm. platform that was, you know, didn't really matter, you know, a few He's thousand about people. seven and a half million YouTube followers now. Now we're talking about seven million people and it's, that's grown in a few months. And, you know, the powers that be, he ain't just messing about with like mm-hmm. small people. He's banging on the biggest powers that be. The yeah. biggest yep. powers that run this planet, the military industrial complex uh, companies, the people who fund weapons, people who make weapons, they make what's their job? We make missiles and sell them to we the highest bidder. Unless bidder. these missiles get fired, we can get paid. And all yep. these powerful people, and there's a lot of them, very rich, powerful people, all have shares in this company, they need us to be killing people mm-hmm. or at least firing them. And he's shining a light saying, hang on a minute. And he's shown how it's all corrupt, that he's doing the pharmaceutical companies. He's shown who's got shares in what, the COVID thing. He's shining a big light. And to be honest, for the most part, it's Russell single-handedly that's, I don't want to use the phrase, made me see the light, but certainly made me very distrustful on everything. And yeah. I'm not saying Russell is right, but I'll tell you what, he makes a fucking hell of a case. Yeah. He's certainly a he? trailblazer, isn't he? He? Ma- he makes a hell of a case. And there's very few people making a good case against him. Yeah. Other so than, what would you do? You'd than, discredit, did you, wouldn't you? Did you hear this Hollywood celebrity who was addicted to the drugs and sex had sex with lots of women? And you Th- just, that, That's your argument against what you're saying. And you just put a little spice on it. You know, you just take the truth, take 95% of the truth, and just put some on top that he forced himself on one person, yep. then run it back. And what's happened is 20 years ago, the world was a different place. Yes. Yes. Now, you look at a woman the wrong way, you're in big trouble. Mm. You can't say certain things now. Exactly, but you could 20 you could years then. ago. And he certainly yeah. could. I'm not saying it was right. It probably wasn't right. It was still, you know, probably vulgar. But something that was classed as, oh, get off us then, mm. is now like you're going to jail. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I saw an American study this week that said that 45% of 18 to 25-year-olds, I think it was, have never approached a woman. You don't move. <laughs> That's a different world than I live in. This is the thing to know. I am absolutely 100% on hmm. Russell's side, I'm afraid. What scares wow. me as well is he hasn't even been charged with anything yet. And yet our government are writing to foreign companies and saying, do not pay this man. Hmm. Silence in him. You're, you're not you allowed think. to make a living before you've even been charged with a crime. Yet there's people in prison. They can write books and make money off it. Jeffrey Archer, Charles Bronson made money in prison off their books. Hmm. But he hasn't been charged with anything. And the UK government, they're trying to get foreign companies to stop paying him. Mm. It's a mm. scary precedent. Yeah. I must say, are we, look, Russell weren't an angel, you know. But he was an open book. He was an open book. He never, ever or an pretended. Open book, an open bookie-wookie. An open bookie-wookie, exactly. And mm. we all read it. We all know. Mm. He never he never pretended. No. He was openly, he would flirt with male or female. He wasn't oh. bothered. Oh, he's not bothered. Not bothered at all. Not bothered. Not bothered. Yeah, so do we think that he's 
because of what the drummy bangs. Mm -hmm. Do we think people have said, "Listen, we need to shut, we need to shut this guy down a little the, bit. We need the, to shut this the, guy they up." They with a capital T need him to shut up. Too many people are listening to this guy. And he's yeah. really causing a few problems. Yeah, absolutely. And surely I'm now thinking there can't be just the three of us sat here thinking this same thing because uh, surely you know there's other people me? out there that see this. What rubs me up the wrong way? And do you know what? I'm pro I'm going to hold my hands up. I'm going to be biased. Do you know okay. why I'm biased? Go on. Because I'm a fan of Russell. I am. Yeah. So this is the truth, like really like, and I'll, I'll hold my hands up, you know, credit where credit is due. I am going to favour him because mm. I'm a fan. I was a fan before this. Yeah. So really my judgment can't really be like, taken seriously. I think the only people who's, who I'd like to hear is people who weren't a fan, didn't hate him, didn't like him. They were just like, oh, he's just a guy. Yeah. What do they think? You know, where I've, do they I've sit? heard a lot of podcasts of people that don't like him also defending him though. Really? I've, I've, from what I've heard from... Talking to people and listening to podcasts, I would say ninety percent of the UK think he's innocent. Mm. That just that, that's my gut feeling on it. Well, I heard like um, Farage. What's his, what's that fella's name? Farage. Nigel Farage. Yeah, he basically did a little snippet. Um, you can bring it up if you want, Southpaw. He basically um, he said, "I think it's good to listen to," and I think it's pretty much puts it in a nutshell of what we're saying. I don't think he's a massive fan of Russell. To be fair. Um, but I, he, I can't imagine Farage watching Get Him to the Greek. No, no. <laughs> but he, he said something and, you know, I thought, yeah, it's pretty much it in a nutshell. Let's, let's bring it up. Um, what did he say? I, I don't know if this is it so far. I don't think this is it. No, this isn't it, mate. No, no, no. Come off this, mate. <laughs> so, um, Farage on Brand's uh, allegations. It must be that one. He's upset some very powerful people. Yeah, that's it. He's upset some very powerful people. That's it. Have we not got premium yet, boss man? <laughs> Let's have a look. Now the newspapers have been dominated by as has the broadcast. Yes, it is the Russell Brand scandal. Channel 4 dispatches his programme, the research done in conjunction with the Times and the Times newspaper. Now, got to be honest, I am not a big fan of Russell Brand. He was this hard left activist and I finished up. Being against him in question time in 2014. Here's a little taster of that evening. That's all well and good. You've got your point of view. The question was, is Britain overcrowded? And 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 do you think that's wrong? I mean, do you think? Yes. No, I do. Can I be wrong? I think you're wrong. Are you wrong? This is called God. He's brilliant. Well, tonight you could have done that. And what happens is. Members of the audience ask questions, and we're expected to answer them. You haven't answered this lady's question. Do you think Britain's overcrowded and there was a strain on public resources and people's quality of life? We need more money for public resources. Well, where's it going to come from? Well, that was Russell, Russell Brown, and I'll never forget, just before going on air, he had his own two personal makeup assistants, and they were combing his chest hair, and this didn't really work before he went on stage. <laughs> So, so I thought he was really, really rather loud, loud incredibly coarse, coarse, rather rude, rude probably, probably very badly damaged by drugs. Um, um, and, and as for his, his behaviour with women and other people, people well, I don't, I don't know. know. I'm, it's, it's not for me to judge. judge. There's, There's no evidence being produced. There, there are four people, people maybe five, five now, that have come out of the woodwork. But does anyone give me pause for thought? You see, I understand that through his YouTube channel and much else, he is upset some very powerful people. He's upset the big government, he's upset the big pharma, he's upset Bill Gates and everybody. But if you go out there and upset people, big powerful people, you've got to be pretty clear that there's nothing they can really hit you back with. But just have a think about this. His 2010 autobiography, which was called Booking Work, had this quote in it. What kind of a man was I treating women in this way? If this, if this is what I'm, I'm telling, telling you, you, can you, you imagine, imagine what's, what's being left out? out? Oof. I'm not sure <laughs> his guilt or his innocence. But there are many other things in his own autobiography that he's written about his behaviour with women that are disturbing, abusive, and not very pretty. Yeah. But these are 20 years ago. And what takes you... If you've got... That man was so famous, right? If there was... Anything like that where a woman thought she was raped, she would have gone straight mm. to the papers. She would have, if That's something wasn't right, she would have. She you wouldn't would have waited think. 20 years to be paid, or God knows what's happening, for, for them to finally say again, something. Ru Russell Brand was probably the British heart from oh, for, a long, for a long number of years. 
Shagger of he, the year. He mm. didn't need to force himself with anybody. No. Oh. Could have who he I'll go back again. He married Katy Perry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he didn't need to force himself with anybody, did he? No. You know, a lot of, when it all came out, a few people, not a lot, a few people who'd had um, flings, relationships, whatever you want to call it, sexual encounters with him, did come on, on here, and did say, like, no. I'll tell you somebody who would have, one that interested me, somebody who really could have cooked him, really. I mean, look, I've talked about this on the show with Chris the other day, which was, do you remember there was the, the Manuel thing? Do you remember? Yes. So basically, long story short, he was on radio yeah. or whatever with, with, what's his name? The Jonathan from Ross. Them two. They rang up bloody Manuel, okay? Him. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, he's from Folly Barcelona. Towers. The Folly Towers. Obviously, Russell had a fling with a, his, his granddaughter, right? And he rang her up and basically was inappropriate. You know what yeah. I mean? Basically said, yeah, I, I had sex with your granddaughter. Long story short. She came on the telly. And when I seen an interview with her first, I forget her name, I seen it like come up in the thing and I was like, she's going to get him. Like, because she's obviously got an axe to grind. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you mm. think, she came on and basically said like, no, like, yeah, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah, he annoyed me. But she actually sang his praises mm. and said, well, there was never anything like that with me. And to be perfectly honest, what he's done for me outside that nobody knows about. He actually paid for me to go to rehab and stuff like this. So he's actually done good things. Again, I'm biased because I'm a fan. Mm. He might be a total rapist for all I know. Mm. I just don't think he is. If I'm, if I'm given an opinion, and this is what this is, it's just an opinion. It's just an opinion. And uh, it, it seems to me that he, as Mr. Farage just said, he is rubbing up the wrong people, probably the biggest people you can rub up wrong. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's about time he, uh, he got to test his own medicine. If they find evidence and manage to show it, I will be very surprised. I'm not saying definitely not, but I would be very surprised if they find evidence that shows he is. Well, it's impossible to prove. It's, it's impossible. Late on, yeah. Do you it's know what I would love, right? And this just probably goes to show the female side of my brain. I hope that this eventually erupts into that wonderful display we had of Johnny Depp um, two years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that was wonderful. I would love that. Oh, believe me, like, we, it's all early days now, but mm. there'll be some lawyers yeah. going on in the background. We've still got some I money. it's televised. Yeah. This is going to go one or two ways. Yeah. Somebody's getting charged with some of it mm -hmm. because either... They're going to get some with Russell and get him charged of being a sexual criminal and he's going to be punished for it. Or those people are going to feel the wrath of a multimillionaire coming down on you who's a public figure who you've yep. just destroyed. Not destroyed, because to be Getting fair... people to riot in the street. Basically, I actually <laughs> think this is going to make him more money than he's ever made. Absolutely. I think this yeah. is going to do a full... It'll be a while, yeah. but I think it'll do a full 180 turn because I think it won't be proved. Russell is so articulate in how he speaks and so intelligent... That that's going to play in his favour. And I think he's going to continue banging his drum. And I think the world will continue a turn. I think more distrust will grow. And in the end, I think the two will just meet back up together in the end. And it'll be like, Russell was right the whole time. I think this that's will result in more people hearing this message against the governments and the pharmaceutical companies. People that don't give a monkeys about that, but mm -hmm. liked him in his comedy films or Big Brother's Big Mouth going, oh. Russell Brand, rapist. Oh, he's done a video on Rumble. Let's see what he's saying. Mm. Oh, Pfizer did what? Mm. I think this could uh, accidentally bring more people to his message. I love how he's risen as well. How how he started off as that. You know, and before that, he did a, um, a Channel 4 programme. You, you probably won't remember it. It was like ages ago. He did a Channel 4 programme where they did like stupid things, like stupid dares and stuff like that. And he was fantastic in that. Um, and now look at him. He's this like public figure who's got all this knowledge and he's so clever he's so clever and it's like oh i love him I think he's can great. i go for a pee <laughs> can we stop that there just need a pee back in a minute <laughs> good we <wee>, that <laughs> yeah do you know what what happened do you help me out on this rob right yeah and it's only happened in later life no matter how much i shake when i put it back in <laughs> There's Amy always a, there's a little bit more. I want to go on Dragon's Den. Go on. And um, like a pair of pants with like a disposable liner on the inside. Okay. So you can put your... Like a piss so you, can, so you can do your fly back up mm. and then kind of put a tab out of your waistband to take the bit of tissue that's just taken the last drop out. Huh. Do you know what? 
you know what, right? Actually, there's a reason. No, <laughs> uh, you, can, you, can on. Not, you can Google this, right? This is actual true fact, this, guys, right? If you sat down when you weed, that wouldn't happen because your bladder would be able to drain effectively. Now, this is a Googling thing. Yeah, but if you sit down, how high up the wall can you get it? <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> You're saying that if you sit down and have a wee, yep. you don't get dribble? No, because you'll be able to drain your bladder effectively. Hmm. Mm. I, I need some... Uh... Sit I'm down. dubious. How do you, is that a backup up <laughs> thing? No, you see. <laughs> what? What do you know? Your sister's mm. right. Lovely. Even with one leg up, mm -hmm. the pelvic floor does not rest properly. And who's so weeing with one leg up? <laughs> dogs. Yeah, dogs. <laughs> so this bladder may not... So hang on. You sit down when you wee. And and that will be problem solved. Right. You won't be pissing on your trousers. So you just need to sit down and wait. And do you know what? So Every woman in the world will appreciate you sitting down because you leave the toilet seat down. And there won't ever be any, you know, riots and disruptions and your tea getting spat in because they're like disgruntled with you. It Who's spitting in tea? The, oh, the, the problem is with, with my day job, I do a lot of wheeze against lorry wheels. Mm. Oh, no. You can't really sit down next to a lorry wheel. That absolutely oh, no. disgusts me that you do that. The life of a lorry driver. <laughs> oh, yeah. He has a bottle. You have a bottle? Oh, you need your EPB. Sorry, what? EPB, the emergency pee bottle. For if you wake up in the night. <laughs> right. And the truck stops at the end of the car park, you need your EPB. Right. Is it, I mean, it's a big bottle, I assume. It's just the, um, I, I have bottles of mineral water, so I could you know, make a cup of tea in the morning. Right. Um, just one of those empty bottles. Right. You just pee in the bottle. Yeah. Right. I've never heard that. No. That's the thing, is it? <laughs> have you ever been camping? Unfortunately. You, if you wake up in the night and in the wee, did you walk all the way to the toilet block or did you go to the nearest bush? You just, yeah, you just get out and just, yeah. just, just pee I mean, in I, I've got a cab that I can stand right up in. Right. So why, why jump out of the cab and mess about finding the keys and walk across to the truck stop and... What a sight. You know, everyone has, every truck driver has an EPB. Is that a fact? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Do you know what? <laughs> A life of a truck driver, there's a, it, 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 it's, it sounds good because there's no, like, you kind of don't have a boss. You're like, is it as good as it sounds? Like, my, my romanticised, like, version of it is you're in your own space, you've got your own music on all day, you're chilling, no one's telling you what to do. Is it that good? It suits you or it does. You, you need the right personality. Um, pretty much what you said, yeah, I spend 50 hours a week by myself listening to podcasts, um, mm. I can go days without phoning in the office if it's a big job. Can you? But no, generally speaking, I, I, so I've already given, given my job for Monday. So I'll hop my truck Monday, I'll do my two jobs, and then I'll phone the office and say, where do you want me next? Right. And that's it. They'll say, go and pick up in Barnsley, go and deliver it to London, phone us when you're done. Just like that. It's easy as that. And what a life. I've had them before where the delivery's due for, say, Thursday morning. The sat there says, I'll get there at 2 o'clock Wednesday afternoon. So I can mm. literally have like a 20-hour break. I mean, to be fair, man's, my story's not anything like yours, but the best job I've ever had was a van driver. Was it yeah. really? I absolutely loved it. As far as enjoying what you do. Yeah. The wage was crap. Yeah. But it was, it was great. I mean, what's that to like? You know. Exactly, yeah. 8 o'clock in the morning, you've got a full van, and you're, you're off. Just you, your the, joints. The best part laughing. of over a decade... In retail, right? Mm. Members of the public saying, can't you bend this rule? Can't you twist this rule? Can't what I love with this, everyone's in the industry. If you get to a warehouse to say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I understand. Mm. It's brilliant. Yeah. I had, I've had no argument. I've been doing this for about a year and a half now. I've had no arguments. And I'm sure that you can just, no. Taco says, no, okay, boss. Mm, that's it. <laughs> it's great. Hmm. Mm. So I don't want to waste any... Um, Conspiracy time. Because <laughs> you're enjoying this so yeah. much. We have Rob, and I, I like um, I like the way Rob looks at things. Oh, I'm certainly interested he's to like, hear what you think. It's almost like he's a box ticker, isn't it? He's a box ticker. It's almost like he's a box ticker. So should we get should we get really really dark now? Go on, how dark do you want to go? Epstein Island. Oh, you love this topic, don't you? Mm. Mm. Do, do, do you believe in the conspiracy food that there's a global cabal of powerful people taking children to an island and having sex with them? I've certainly heard it. We've all heard it. It's <laughs> whether or not you believe it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 100%. So where do you think Mr. Epstein sits I mean, in the chain? 
uh, Ghislaine Maxwell was the only person ever to be found guilty of um, child sex trafficking to no clients. Hmm. That's never happened before, has it? Who was she selling them to? Nobody, apparently. <laughs> so do you think how he died, right, in prison? What do you think happened um, there? They, they say he hung himself. That's what they say. From like a four-foot ladder rung mm-hmm. with a bit of paper. Was it a bit of paper, was it? <laughs> I think it was something like toilet paper or something. And the, um, the guard left his post and mm. the CCTV broke down at the exact time he hung himself. Mm. What a very unfortunate coincidence. Mm. Do you think he paid his way out? <laughs> oh, I, th- I think he was killed before he could reveal any secrets. Oh, I thought you were going to say something this, else. Um, I was reading a, a new conspiracy theory this week. Mm. Go on. About how Peter Fowl Island thinks into the death of Princess Diana. Hang on, go back. What's Peter Fowl Island? That's Epstein's Island. <laughs> That's Epstein's Island. Island. It's, okay. it's Peter Fowl Island. Okay, um, okay. So there are some flight logs alleged to have come out which have a list of celebrities and politicians and royalty who are on flight logs having visited the island. Okay. And one of the people on there is Prince Andrew, which shouldn't be a surprise. No. we know about Prince Andrew. No. So the theory goes that Princess Diana found out about this, knew what Epstein Island was, and said to her husband, Prince Charles, I don't like your brother going to this island. Um. Unfortunately, Prince Charles' name also appears on that flight log. No, it doesn't. Does it? Is that a fact? That's a f- well, this, this, this image of a flight log is alleged to be genuine. Huh. I don't think it's ever been officially confirmed to be genuine. Hmm. So what you're saying is that... In theory. The, in the, theory. the theory is that she said, I think your brother's a nonce, and her nonce husband knocked her off. I love that word. <laughs> nonce. No, you do. You like that nonce. word. Nonce. So, because I've never heard that before. I heard about Andrew, obviously. We all know about Andrew. Mm. We've seen the photograph. The, uh, the, yeah. the, there's an image of, it, it goes around Twitter all the time with this flight log, which has a lot of names of celebrities and politicians and whatever else. Mm-hmm. How genuine it is up for debate. Hmm. But there's a lot of names on there that wouldn't surprise you. Um, yeah, okay, Southpaw. Just go on to Google and just search for flight log to Epstein's Island. Yeah, probably just search Epstein Island, not Pedophile Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, unless you're on a VPN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, go on, images. Ah. Oh. That's, uh, yeah, that's certainly some of them. Click on that there, the middle one, Facebook. Zoom in on that bad boy. Uh, quality's off. It really is, isn't it? Uh, this has a slightly better quality. You can be able to read most of Acon. those. Acon. <laughs> Demi Moore doesn't surprise me. There's a video of her snogging a Jewish boy at his 13th birthday. Will Smith, Will Farrell. John Legend. What? John Legend doesn't Tom surprise Hanks. me. Tom Hanks. That doesn't surprise this me. This can't be real. Steven Spielberg. Will Farrell. What? Mm. This can't be. Robert Downey Jr. This can't be real. Quentin Tarantino, Pharrell Williams. No. Oprah Winfrey? That doesn't surprise me. Hang on a minute. So these are all circulated across... Are these, are these facts? I mean, it's on I, Reddit. I think, I think the um, authenticity of this is debated, because obviously no government has come out and said, yes, these are real. Yeah, because people could just be printing stuff and uploading it's, it to Google. Yeah, you've, you, anything like this, you've got to take a pinch of salt. But there are some names there that won't... that personally don't surprise me. Epstein's... There we go. Oh, this one on the right, Jay-Z, look. Um, I see Seth Prince Green. Andrew and Prince Charles above Quentin Tarantino. I don't believe all this. Jeez Louise. I don't believe this. This, this. this isn't true. Not all those people. Also, you've got to take a pinch of salt because the authenticity is um, debated. Yeah. Hmm. But that's, that's the theory. Is she, she complained about Andrew going there and it turns out he was as well. Right. If you believe these fight logs to be genuine. And see, see what Google says, Southport. Just, just put. Did, uh, <laughs> Google won't give you a straight answer no, on this. No, it's Google. No way. But let's just see what the thing says, just out of curiosity. Did, uh, did King Charles, which is who he is now, King Charles now, yes. Did King Charles go to Epstein's Island? <laughs> let's just see what it says. See that first suggested result there? Did King Charles kill Diana? <laughs> well, what's his uh, friends with? Uh, as you say, this is Google, so they're gonna. Yeah. They're, they're not gonna allow. Uh, they're not going to allow that on, even if he did. Okay, okay. Given it's under a large portion of... No, there's a lot of things that came off the art. There were some artworks, for example. Um, there's a famous one. One's an all painted of Bill Clinton in a blue dress, I've similar to this. Monica Lewinsky's dress. Yeah. That's genuine painting. Mm. Another one is a, a similar painting of George Bush sat cross-legged on the floor, um, flying paper airplanes into little towers. No way. So, these are genuine paint. There's the Oh, there's the George Bush one, you see? Love that. 
flying this paper airplanes, the Jenga towers, two Jenga towers, <laughs> two planes, sat in the Oval Office. Love this. So it's yeah. beautiful. If these things never happened, why would someone paint these images of them? You know, it's, I love a conspiracy theory. And these images are, are kind of meant to be secret. They're tucked away in his house on his private island. They're not there in art galleries. So these paintings actually exist. Yeah. And they're in Epstein's... They're on his the private world. island. They're not in art galleries for the public to see. These were on his private island. That's so weird. It's, why would, why would yeah. paintings like that exist? Why? Why would, you, why would you commission, especially if you're friends with George Bush and um, Bill Clinton, That's why so would you commission strange. a painting like that in the house that they're probably going to come and visit you in? Click on the, if I, the Times of Israel. What's that painting? Bottom if, left, if, South Park. If I commissioned a wall painting of you in a blue dress like that and you came to my house on the wall, you'd be asking some questions. <laughs> yeah, why? <laughs> why does this painting exist? <laughs> yeah. Like, you've got to, like, yeah, go behind, like, yeah, Why? <laughs> Like, you, you, your mind boggles. Like, you wouldn't just do it for the crack, would you? And especially someone so important who comes to your house and you're going to put that painting up to upset him? Yeah. Or is it's... it an inside joke that none of us know about? Well, I, I, I suppose that's the beauty. Maybe. Of, that's the beauty of things like this, isn't it? Yeah. It gets us... It was you might... the public knew the joke. Well, I would say, right, let's challenge it in another direction. Would you ever, if you had a friend coming over and you had some pictures that were a little bit, you know, uh, a bit racy or anything like that, display them ready for them coming over? How powerful was this friend? Are we talking the former president of the United we States of America? We don't know how, like, how good friends they are. They could have been proper, like, proper pals. Um, but most they? of my friends are like, you know, engineers, salesmen, van drivers, no one that could get me assassinated by the Secret Service. True. But what it's you're saying is you'd probably do it, wouldn't you? It's a different level of friend, though. Um, Unless you've got something over on them, I just I mean, that that was a cl that was a scandal for Bill Clinton. He had to go to court and say, "I did not have sexual relations with that lady." Beautiful, isn't <laughs> it? That's that's like you get it all pains of your friend's worst public um, trial. Mm -hmm. And the, the George Bush one's really creepy. That um, we all know the conspiracy theories about nine eleven, and that. Almost confirms that they're talking about it behind the scenes. Tell us about them conspiracy theorists, Rob. <laughs> I Tell watched us. your eyes twinkle then, just as he said that. Tell us, because I actually don't know any about this. As far as, from a, as, far as I'm concerned, um, it was straight up terrorist, nothing doing all. The short version being the US government did it. Okay. Um, so September the 10th, 2001. The day before. Yeah. Donald mm -hmm. Rumsfeld did a press conference Who saying he? he was the, oh, what was his role? I think he was Defence Secretary or something. Okay. He was very high up. He did a press conference saying that the, who is it, the Pentagon? I thought, it's not CIA, is it, the Pentagon? Isn't that the National Security? It is Security, CIA, Just the defence. Whoever is, they had lost, I think it was $7.1 trillion. It's not the CIA. Un unaccounted for, completely unaccounted for. No idea where this money's gone. This happens and, all the time. And the following day, something blows up the section of the Pentagon that houses those offices where those records would be. Hmm. And the Twin Towers and the one that landed in the field at the same time. Right. But the plane crashed. Again, that's quite, a, that's quite a coincidence. The day after you announce that, the office blows up, so the records might be of where that money went. Again, they're all theories. It's a happy accident. Hmm. You can probably find the Donald Rumsfeld thing, because that was a genuine press conference. You know, that wasn't a secret. He came out and said, we've lost this money. So that would have hmm. been, I say, September 10th, 2001. They've, they've lost a lot of money. But a plane did hit the Pentagon, right? Something at the Pentagon. Um, Is for, there videos of it? There the, the, there's, there's reports from the guys that trained... The, these guys played flight lessons and got their pilot sizes and whatever. There's reports that they weren't very good pilots, but this guy managed to take a plane, hmm. take on a massive um, detour. detour from its planned path hmm. with no interception from the American Air Force, bring it right down parallel to the ground and hit the, and hit the side of that Pentagon wall almost perfectly. Hmm. And a similar thing could be said for the two that hit the towers. They came way off course, hmm. had no interception from the Air Force, and hit those relatively small targets for what were allegedly quite bad pilots. And hmm. then, luckily for us, um, one of the things that did survive the wreckage was their passports. So we were able to tell their names quite easily right. when the passports survived those burning buildings. Hmm. All the conspiracy theory, of course, you know, I'm sure none of this... Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that this happened. Oh, this is just, we're just reading the conspiracy theories, you know. We're just reading them um, off the internet. 
Um, I haven't heard any of the 9-11 ones, but I'm, I'm, um, I'm into There's a them. lot of reports on the ground that day because of the news run there and started getting the reports of people to the streets. Firefighters, firefighters saying they heard explosions below the ground. Right. Um, the BBC announced that Building 7 had fallen down when in the background of the news reporter it was still standing. That went down about half an hour later. Hmm. Um, a lot of stuff that didn't add up and a lot of it will be fog of war yeah. people panicking people running around stories get crossed but a lot of um, it is the um, I think there was a picture of the passports there that survived the fire was it? oh yeah the, the, the pilot's passports were fine they, they were found on the ground and they were easily identified that's crazy how they but survived they, they see the what? isn't that lucky that that survived that was that literally their passport and wallet. Sat on top of the rubble. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, that is quite lucky, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. I love a conspiracy theory. They're brilliant, aren't And the they? problem is they did a big um, inquiry into what happened and the response and what could be done to prevent it. And the inquiry wasn't done well at all. No. A lot of it was done behind closed doors out of the public eye. Um a lot of evidence wasn't even looked at or addressed, and it was very unsatisfactory. The, the government got the answer they wanted, but the way it was done was very uh, unsatisfactory. Well, it's not the first time, and it won't be the last. It never is. No. no. <clears throat> what do you think, Amy? Man, we were kids when this came out. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's I'm been ingrained. I was going to say, it's been ingrained in me that much. I find it difficult to not believe that it isn't terrorist but maybe this is how you know how how they end up fading and people don't don't believe that it is a conspiracy because we were that well, young as i'm saying all this stuff i'm not trying to belittle the victims of that day it was a horrible tragedy oh, literally God. the worst the fact we've is ever people seen. died yeah, yeah it's, that was yeah, the yeah. worst tragedy we've ever seen whatever the cause of that of those explosions were yeah, yeah. you know it, it was a horrible day i mean planes definitely went into them buildings well, i watched no, them you, i was going to say you can't ah, deny there's even it debate about that were I mean, planes, I saw it live. Were, were they planes or were they missiles and things like that? There's even debate about what actually hit the buildings. Obviously not the first, but I watched the second one live. Mm. Yeah, I watched Go it. Go into it. Mm. I was in, it was at Sandrick's. It was. I was in bed, I remember. The, 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 the C- Stoner, wasn't The it? CCTV from the Pentagon is very iffy as well for that plane. Is it? There's literally like two frames and you think, how's the Pentagon got that crap CCTV? No. That should be like the most secure building in the world. But the second tower... Obviously, they didn't catch the first, but the second no. tower was live, broadcasted across the all world. All the news will point their cameras at it. But um, what I mean by the debate of what hit it is, could it have been, say, for example, a missile painted to look like a plane? Maybe. Yeah, that's what that's what I mean by that. So, I mean, definitely hit it. It was moving 100%. very slow, you know, for a, for a missile. I've never seen a missile fly, though, in person. No, I've got no person. idea what a missile in flight looks like. I've seen it on... Um seen it on the news no man that was a plane the second one was a plane definitely it looked like a plane you see it turning I don't think been, the second one the, the cameras of the world are looking at those towers yeah the, there was very little footage of the first one because no one thought anything was going to happen up there yeah yeah I don't even think the first one was captured was it I think there's some very amateur footage but again in 2001 our camcorders were crap no, I was going to say, I don't think we had, um, we didn't have very good cameras on I, I, our phones I think there's then. literally like three videos from someone messing about with a camcorder and it just catches something in the background. There was... I tell you what, as far as, um, you know, making a statement, making a point, they, they didn't, they and you didn't have to do it like, didn't they? As well, we did just go back to the COVID thing as well. They didn't waste that tragedy. The, the Americans brought in the Patriot Act. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got all the ramped up security airports and international travel, which still hasn't been taken back over 20 years later, I if I if I took that and that on a plane, mm. I'd have to throw one away. Yeah. It's over 20 years since 9-11. Mm. And I'm going to be playing with a bottle of water and a Red Bull. Yeah. With, coming back from America, you've got to take your shoes off. It's crazy. It's, you, you know... They, Checking between your toes. You again, don't, don't waste a good tragedy. No. They, they really tighten down the security for that. No. Yeah. Is there any more before we leave the conspiracy? I was going to say, no, he's, he'll have lots. No, tell me one that we have, because, you know, I, I wrote down a few. I knew you were coming, so I okay. wrote a few things that interested me, the COVID, the vaccines, the future pandemic, stuff like that, okay. and, and these. Is there any conspiracies that I haven't touched on that you might um Okay, here's a controversial it? one. In the last past few years, right. I've seen a few things um, for the Earth being flat. 
that oh, I can't that I can't I was refute. Say you're gonna love no, this. Honestly, I'm not saying the earth is flat. I'm saying there's a few things that I just can't refute. I'm like, wow. Now I'm now I'm intrigued. Right, honestly, wow. just about, let him. Let wow. him. Have you heard about the flight paths on Come a flat on. earth map? No, tell so, me. So say you take a flight from Argentina to Australia. Okay. You would think, when you imagine a map in your head, you would stop at maybe South Africa to refuel on the way? Possibly. The flight goes right over Europe. It's a massive detour. But on the flat earth map, it's a straight line. Hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what would we Google for? Can you get the flight path up of... Oh, I think this is... A, yeah, here's an example here, look. So these are flight times around... Oh, that's, that's the other thing for them. This, not, this is the problem using Google, you see, is Google wants to show the Earth's round. And it's, yeah. And but Rob I mean, wants to just put his point across that it <laughs> might not be. No, no, like, no, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a betting man, so I, I bet it's not. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm saying. I, I think it's more likely round than um, flat, yeah, don't get me but wrong, yeah. With flight paths, like, we've all been on planes across yeah. the Atlantic and around the world, and, you know, for, for years, I've looked at that map and think, why don't we go on a straight line? Yeah. Why do we do this loop? Mm. The but flight, there's a reason, though, isn't there? The flight from England to Florida, you go oh, kind of you nearly over Greenland. north of the Atlantic, yeah. down the coast of Canada and America. Yeah. Well, on the flat earth map, that's pretty much a straight line. Oh. Why? Why? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have anything to refute that with. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, what I, he's saying, right, he doesn't... <laughs> Please just correct, Dan. You don't necessarily believe well, that the Earth is flat. Well, what you're saying is you found some good, arguments that you can't argue it's for. It's good to ask questions. And sometimes the answers don't agree with what you think the answers are going to be. What you're saying, Tom, is the world flat? <laughs> is the world flat or is it round? <laughs> I think it's round and all. <laughs> I think it's round. Or things like... Um, <laughs> Man's got a point. People go around the world. Got a point. Or things like oh, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, but you, these, you know, when you see the flight paths, obviously, you know, let's, the one you've taken a lot is from England to yeah. America. Obviously, when you look at a map, a map is flat. Yeah. So you think, oh, you just go like this in mm. a straight line, but and when you see a flight path, it goes like this. Mm. But like, that's because a well, map's flat in the world. If you can make this top round, right so image the full screen, way. the one that's on the preview there. Yeah, yeah, if you make that full screen, so we can just see a bit clearer. Oh. If you follow from where England to Florida is, that's a straight line across the North Atlantic. I'd have to zoom in a bit. I can't see. That's kind of the way the flight path goes, though. Yeah, the straight line on the flat Earth map. Yeah, but whether yeah, but even when that's a globe, even if it was round, that's still the quickest way. So it, England would be about five o'clock from the centre of that map. Yeah. And Florida would be at about 8 o'clock. And it's pretty much a straight line on that map. I'd say England's more of a 2 o'clock and Florida's more of a 4 o'clock, looking at that. No, I think you're looking at North Russia there. I can't see England. <laughs> you can see Africa. No, oh, fam. Africa's obvious. He's getting up to the TV now, look. <laughs> this England? Yeah. Yeah. This Florida? Yeah. yeah. That's a straight line. You just moved a finger across. Yeah. yeah. Where's it going on the globe earth? But that's where the, that's the flight path. On a globe, that's what I mean. On a globe Earth, it goes right up and around. It doesn't. On a globe Earth, it should go across the middle of the Atlantic. Hmm. Don't let him. <laughs> Just don't let him, Dan. I can't. <laughs> it's round, man. It's round. I'm, I'm, man. I'm sure it is. Don't get me wrong. Of course, I, but it's round. I can't argue with this flat Earth. Um, evidence. But what Rob likes to say is, obviously, there was a time when the smartest minds in the world believed that the Earth yeah. was flat. And what if they were right? And and there's been here's people a, just saying not. That's here's all he one. means. There is no photo of the Earth as a ball. Well, you can't get a photo every, of an Earth every, every as a ball. Every picture you've seen of the every picture you've seen of the Earth from you can't, NASA. Yeah, but you can't is a, photo a photo show. of a ball because you'd have to see all sides of it. What I mean, Joe's Joe, Joe, pictures, <laughs> Joe's pictures from space of the Earth. Yeah. NASA. Not a single one of those is a genuine photo. They're all composites and photoshopped together from right. a myriad of different photos. This is spherical. Yeah. yeah. Right? No, no. <laughs> but on a picture, <laughs> that's flat. Yeah. 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 But it's not because I don't see the back of it. What I mean is it, all, of these images, all of these images, even the official NASA ones, are photoshopped composites. They haven't just got an astronaut to point his phone out of the window of the spacecraft and take a picture. 
and now structure have an article on their own website talk about how these put these images together fam it's round <laughs> fam it's round i'm man. not saying it's not round fam, don't get me wrong listen, i'm not saying it's, it's not round, round man i'm saying there's Things that I struggle to find an answer against. Listen, I can get down with like the COVID keep it thing. Open mind. I can get down <laughs> with the Epstein thing. Interesting story, isn't he? A box ticker. Box he grabs star? your attention, <laughs> doesn't he? You're getting sucked in too. Yeah. But all, all of these pictures are Photoshop <laughs> composite images. And look, just at the. Um, see the. Bef- you got the big preview on the top right. You'd now. ask him back for a second date, Dan. The next you know, you two would. pictures below it. Why is Africa such a different size on both of those two pictures? Huh? Look at the size of Africa compared to the Earth there. Yeah. Now click on another one. It's bigger. It's the same, man. It's the same size. It's always the same. Obviously, when we see a map, like, that's not a true reflection of actually how the... It's actually, like, miles off. When we see a map Mm. that's flat, in reality, like, the sizes are all on the pitch. Yeah, they've had to warp it because it's hard to make a sphere into a 2D image. Like, I've heard that when you look at, like, a, a flat map... You see England here, you see Africa here, but in real life, those sizes are off. Like, England are a lot smaller and Africa's, like, a lot bigger like, than that. There's also good evidence for global worth, such as we can fly around the world and things like that. Sunrise and sunset, and so that's evidence of a global worth as well. So I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm saying that I've seen arguments for both that I can't refute. I, I haven't heard a flat Earth theory that I can't refute yet. Or well, here's the, the, the logo for the UN has a flat Earth map on it. Why? I love that everyone's having to Google everything <laughs> Rob says. Yeah, here's the, flat, here's the UN logo with a flat earth map in the middle of it. Why would they use a flat earth map on that logo? <laughs> That's just a picture from the globe from the top. No, because if it was a globe from the top, you wouldn't yeah, be able to see South America and no, Australia. No, 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 but, but any picture is mm-hmm. 2D. But you wouldn't be able to see South America and Australia if you're looking at the globe from, down from the North Pole. No, you wouldn't, no. So but why then, does the UN use a flat earth map on its logo? Just well, to get all the blooming countries in, isn't it? But then like, when you see a, a map at school, when you're at school, it's got all the countries mm, on. Yeah, yeah, but that's not looking down from the North Pole. That's putting the countries on a 2D map so you can see where they are. That's like his flat earth why, thing, isn't it? Why, why, why would the UN logo not just have a picture of the earth? Why would they use a flat earth map in their logo? Well, the because the UN, the United Nations... They are the United Nations. Mm. So they're going to show the all of the nations. So why don't they just have a normal 2D Mercator projection map? Because it they wouldn't could. have looked as good. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just for luck. Because the style people were like, nah, we'll do it this way. <laughs> I'm, I'm not satisfied with either of your answers as to why the UN chose that map on their logo. Listen, the world might be flat. <laughs> they Elon might be... Musk, please can we fly Rob out into I just, space? I, I, until... This is the thing with things like this, and aliens and whatever. Until we can personally go up and look for ourselves, Mm -hmm. we're never going to know. True. We've just got to believe what we're told. True. We're we're told that America is a few thousand miles west. We don't know that. We get in a plane, and we look down at blue for a few hours, and then we land. We could be anywhere. And listen, we just touched on it before. You know, certainly we're at a point in time where I, 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 for one, am very... Dis, you know, dis, untrusting of everything that I yeah. hear, and I, maybe I, I believe there are islands that we haven't been told about. Do you think? Again, what? Who are we to trust that the Earth is the map that we're shown? I've, and again, I've never been further than East Europe and America. There's a whole half of the planet I've never even Seems. been near to. Who knows what's there? <laughs> it's true. I know what I've been told is there, but yeah. I don't know it's there. No, it's a lot of blue on a map, isn't there? A lot it, of blue. M- if you, if you play about of a globe, the Pacific is that big, you can make the planet look completely blue. It's right. Mm-hmm. And we're just trusting that that's how it is. And the, there's no reason for me to bother going down that rabbit hole to find out because it doesn't affect my life one way or another. No, but let's. <laughs> <laughs> no, but let's. And I'll have the evidence to say one way or another. But the, what would be to stop the global governments having a, a whole other continent there that we haven't been told about? Hmm. But what would be the gain in, in, in that? What would be the benefit in them being one there and us not being told? Maybe that's where the giants and dinosaurs now live. I'm loving this. <laughs> no, 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 because he's going to set me off about dinosaurs, right? Can I just say right now, medieval times, so that isn't that long ago, right? Going back to like, what, Tudors and stuff like that. A few hundred years. Yeah, a few hundred years. They have flags with dragons on. Yeah, like mm-hmm. the Welsh flag. That's not a dragon. That is a dinosaur because mm. dinosaurs didn't die millions of years ago. They were around then 
but we thought they were dragons. It's so obvious. There's no dinosaurs in the Bible, but there are dragons. Yeah, because the dragons are dinosaurs. They didn't die then. Okay. So hang on. <laughs> hang on. When are you saying that dinosaurs died? Oh, got extinct. I, I, I genuinely believe that they're actually still around in some way, shape or form. Not what we think. Not the great big ones. No. I think there's a little one still kicking about well, somewhere now. Well, there is. they crocodiles. I see you mm. still got sharks and crocodiles. So not all dinosaurs went extinct. Although mm. we're told, again, we're told they all went extinct. And then in the, in the next breath they say, but sharks and crocodiles survived. Yeah. So, so they're not they all didn't. extinct then, are they? Mm. No. No, no, that that with dragons, absolutely, mm. positively. No, I, I believe that St. George killed a dinosaur. I think it was a dinosaur. Um, I don't think it was a dragon. I think it was a dinosaur. Wow. And I still think yeah. that, and I, I, so I don't believe that that great big um, meteorite killed them all. I think it killed a lot of them, but I genuinely believe a lot of them were still kicking about. They were just rebranded as something else because people didn't know what they were. Hmm. Has that challenged you? Or do you just think we're mad? <laughs> so you're, hang on. So this George thing, that was the 12th century. Yeah, yeah. So you're telling me that you think that seven or 800 years ago, dinosaurs yeah. existed? Definitely. Without a doubt. I love this. Wow. Don't and you? If you, were, if you were trying to settle, well, I've never, I've if never you were trying to settle a city and there was a nearby dinosaur eating all your sheep and kids, you'd want someone to go and kill it. Mm. Well, I guess and what they are described as is reptile-like creatures, large reptile creatures. But as we've said, if you went into, if you went to go and slay something, right, and you came back and you're the only survivor, you're going to say it was the size of a dog or are you going to say it was the size of a building? <laughs> of course And it you had are. wings and it breathed fire. Well, of course. <laughs> no, it was a small dinosaur, what he went and killed. Huh. Mm. <laughs> wow. Wow. Totally. What are you saying, Southpaw? Dinosaurs 800 years ago. You, you having some of that? If, no, you're thinking it's an interesting theory, but look at those pictures, right? How you know that's could a drawing, anyone, right? Yeah, but how could anyone have drew it well, to that level? Then. They have iPhones back then. Yeah, this isn't imagination, is it? They resemble dinosaurs. I definitely don't think it was 65 million years ago. No. I mean, if you look at look at genuinely the, look at that's the, um, that. the characteristics of most of these pictures on the screen. They've got scaly skin. We know dinosaurs had that. They've got wings. We know some dinosaurs had them. Big long necks. Most dinosaurs had that. The sharp teeth. Most dinosaurs had that. All the all the characteristics add up. Mm. Huh? You do realize that when we finish this podcast, like MI five are going to be outside waiting for us. <laughs> oh, we're fucked. Yeah, we're fucked. <laughs> but at least we need my to get our only thing. Hats on. Well, yeah. I say, at least for me, the only thing I believe in is that dinosaurs didn't die millions of years ago. That's about. That's it. You know, I, I was that... giving you the pass, Em. I was giving you the pass, and I was thinking, like, it's you... all happening over this I side. Want, I want you to look at me I right mean... now. Now that I've just told you that, bearing in mind I've just told you that when you sit down and we, you won't pee your pants anymore, that you don't believe me when I say that them dragons ain't dragons, they are dinosaurs that have just been missold. She's crazy. <laughs> I'm not having it. The children were told to be silent. Whilst we're I'm, not mm. I'm not having dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. I'm not having dinosaurs. I'm not having that. Well, I'm not having flat earth and dinosaurs. Why, why would the world put a fictional creature on their flag? I mean, man's why got, why man's is got it a there? Point. You've got a point. <laughs> I know I do. And I'm usually <laughs> right. But no, I, I, this is what it all is. The, if they died you millions of years ago, how is it on the flag? Well, it was a mythical creature. But yeah. how was it mythical? Yeah, but so were how has someone seen it? How has someone drew it? How how has that happened? Look at the shape of it. Someone's seen that. Well, so that's like this. This is the flag for our national pride. We're going to fight for this flag. We're going to go to World Cups for this flag. We're going to fly this around the world to show how proud we are to be Welsh. Let's put a fairy tale on it. Well, you know, let's Google when was <laughs> when was the first thing of a, of a dragon <laughs> thing? Because isn't it like isn't it like the dawn of time? Like thousands of years ago, they were talking about dragons. Has anyone ever dug up the corpse of a dragon? Listen, no, no, and because they don't exist. Civilizations the across the yeah, it's world, mythical. civilizations mm. across the world talk about dragons as well. Yeah, China do. Lots of countries do. Yeah, it, it's a mythical creature. It was. It was. But uh, what, what I mean is, it's not. It's not like a British folk tale. I mean, famously, the Chinese. I mean, the, the Chinese Zodiac... Um, Dragons became extinct 100 million years ago. The Chinese Zodiac, if you go by conventional knowledge, has mm. 11 real creatures and one fictional creature on it, the dragon. Mm. Why wouldn't it just be 12 real creatures? I'm sure we could find the 12th one to go hey, on the there's a, there's a point, Southpaw. 
the uh, Chinese zodiac. That is something like. Mm. Why would they use all real creatures? There must be 12 animals in China. And then one that's pretend. <laughs> mm-hmm. Why would they do that? Exactly. Huh. So, okay. Okay, you're selling me on this now. <laughs> I think that dragons did exist. Yeah. Once. Mm. I don't think it was 800 years ago. And I think we now call them dinosaurs. I, I totally agree. I think it's just rebranded. It's the same creature. Hmm. Look at all the different shapes that you get of dinosaurs. You get your pterodactyls. You get your um, Tyrannosaurus rexes. They're all different shapes, different and sizes. If you go, t- traditionally, the Chinese dragons fly and the British dragons are land based. Mm. But so are dinosaurs. You had pterodactyls, you had Tyrannosaurus rex. Isn't it? I mean, a dragon just looks like a snake. Mm. You know? But some Why? dragons were like that. If you look at, say, for and example, a, 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 but like a dragon still exists it's, now. It's a Komodo dragon. But it, yeah, it, but look at the shape of it. It looks like a dinosaur, doesn't here's it? The, here's the word again, a dragon fly. I was going to say, why can't something have a long body and fly? Well, I mean, that, that put a couple of wings on that, that could be a long dragon fly. It could. The, the shape wouldn't stop it from flying. So you both believe there was dragons? Yeah. I think, and I will say this, I think I've made Rob believe what I say I, I, because I say it with such enthusiasm. I think the dinosaur is a modern word. Hmm. If I, I know it's a modern word. Um, the guy who theorised dinosaurs found the first dinosaur bones about three years after he theorised the existence of dinosaurs. Hmm. Again, another happy accident. Huh. <laughs> is, that, is that true? It's true enough for me. It's true enough for me, yeah. It's true enough for me. It, like, and a lot of the backs dinos- up my theory. A lot of the dinosaur skeletons in museums are mostly um, plaster of Paris bones. They've got you a- know what? I never thought about this before, about the dragon thing, but you've sold me on the, I think dragons were dinosaurs. I think it's the same thing. Yeah. It's a type, it was a brand. Anyway, 1841, Richard Owen coins the word dinosaur. See if you can see when the first dinosaur bone was dug up. I'm sure it was only a few years after he theorised the idea of dinosaurs. You know what's weird? Mm. Why were they only dug up then? Mm. In 1841? Mm. That's what I mean, Why surely. were they dug up like hundreds of years before well, that? Well, they will have been, won't they? And that, that's what makes me then believe that okay, it's because Okay, I was against what I'd heard. <laughs> In 1677, he's credited as the first dinosaur. But his best guess is what it was. It was a giant human. Well, giants is another area that a lot of people talk about, isn't it? A lot of people believe there were giants in the past. Okay. And many of their bones are dug up and just called dinosaur bones. Oh, you see now. Now, now he's lost me again. A lot of again. people believe the giants existed on this earth in the past. Hmm. Okay. They, they, that's not real. That's got to be a hoax. I, I think almost all these pictures are hoaxes, but the, the, the theory is there were giants. And when we find their bones now, we just assume they're dinosaur bones. Aren't giants just Vikings? Who's been a tall race? Even nowadays, we've got us, in, say, look at the us, and us, us in Britain average over six foot, and you've got pygmies at like four foot. So yeah. they call us giants. So it's probably just something like that. Do you think giants like existed? I think it's just... I mean, you've got the David and Goliath story in the Bible. I think it's just taller people. The Western Europe, Nordic kind of people tend to be taller than Asian people. Hmm. And who knows how big or small that difference has been over the course of human yeah, history. Yeah, I mean, things can get exaggerated over time. Yeah, mm. I was going to say, like a five foot, like a five foot odd man and a seven foot man. Like we've seen seven yeah. foot people, they, they exist now. But like dragons and like giants, like, okay, like, what if it was just like a lizard that's been exaggerated to be a dragon? What that's if it, what yeah. I think it is. What if a giant was just a guy that was like a bit tall and yeah. exaggerated yeah. to be a giant? Exactly that. That's what I believe. And that's why tales. I'm saying that I, that I believe dragons are dinosaurs and the same thing and that they didn't die when they did I mean, because at, I think people exaggerated Look at the recent history. It. Do you see those sort of, um, you see them in antique shops, like the ceramic jugs of Africans hmm. with the huge lips and yeah, the yeah, big yeah, eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was like 100 years ago and we were portraying Africans like that. And we know... Africans didn't know that 100 years ago. Mm. So I said about the exaggerated features. We could have just found a, a tall tribe and gone, well, there's a giant. Hmm. And the same with dragons. Same if with I went out the, to yeah, slay something lizard. and yeah. I'm coming back telling that story. Oh, you're going to exaggerate yeah, it. Of course, of course you, you are. are. Because people do. That was massive. The, yeah. the pet shop, the, red, it fire, the pet it shop up the road from me had a, used to have a caiman in it. Oh, yeah. And it looks like a dragon. If I saw one of those in the wild and didn't know what a caiman was. I'd be running home. That's ah, a dragon in the woods. I mean, to yeah. be honest, I've seen a dragon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A Komodo dragon. I don't know what it was. But I'll tell you a story. Have I told you the story about the dragon South Pole? No, I don't think so. Okay, picture the scene. Okay. Um, me and Max Wills, right, who we were <laughs> welding here at a job, welding on mm-hmm. an industrial estate, okay? There was um, a gentleman 
Me and Mark would have been about 19. Oh my God, I remember this story. Yeah. This, what I'm about to tell you was real. This actually happened, okay? So me and Mark were 19, and there was a chap, I don't remember his name, but he was older than us. He was in his 30s. He, um, he had a house, not far from the place where we worked. And the deal was, we were going to, on lunchtime, we got an hour for our lunch, we were going to go to his house and smoke some weed. It was a thing we did on lunchtimes, okay? <laughs> so we all jumped in the car. We drove to this man's house. It was a terraced house um, off North Road, right? It was, um, you know what Irvin's sandwich bar is? Yeah. yeah. It was that street. Yeah. Do I remember it? Halfway up, remember it like it was yesterday. Pulled up, went in the house. Um, the living room was just derelict. We went through to a back room that was connected to the kitchen. That was his living room. Mm-hmm. Okay. Picture the scene. There's a sofa, two chairs, and there's the kitchen. Okay? And there's a coffee table in the middle. Old school, pub ashtray, a thousand fag dumps in it. You know, the old school thing, okay? So I've sat on the settee. Mark sat next to me in the settee. And this chap is sat opposite me. Okay? We're smoking weed. Okay? We're 10, 15 minutes in. And I keep looking at Mark. And Mark's got this look on his face, right? Of like, like this, like... (laughs) Like, and he keeps looking at me, and I'm like, what's he doing? Like, what's he looking at that for? And I'm thinking, come smoking weed, he's trying to put me on one, sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? He's trying to make me go wild. <laughs> he's trying to make you paranoid. Yeah, he's trying to make me paranoid. <laughs> so I'm like, whatever, mate. Do you know, like, I'm a professional. So I'm kind of doing what I'm doing. And, like, he's, like, he's, like, now stood up, and he's, like, laughing. And I'm starting to go paranoid. I'm trying to, like, tell myself, like, don't be paranoid. And he's, like, he's hysterically laughing, like, dying to tell me something. And I'm like, mate, what are you doing? And now they're both laughing. So like Mark's laughing and this guy's laughing. And they're going, have you not noticed? And I'm saying, and I'm like, what you're on about? And he's like, they're just laughing and laughing. And then after a while, Mark points like this over my shoulder here. So I'm sat, so there's a settee here, three seater settee. I'm sat on the end next to the arm, right? And, he, and Mark stood here across the other side of the room and he points just hysterically laughing. And I'm like, and I look to the side and at first, my eyes haven't picked up on what I'm looking at. I'm like, because like, the house is like minging. You know, it's like dirty. Like, it's just like a dirty <laughs> minging house. It was like a brown city. Do you know what I mean? It was just minging. And like, after a few seconds, like, I did double look. And I'm like, eh? And I see this. What looks like a tail, right? And it's coming down the edge of the couch. Down the, from, from the back of the couch. It's come round. And it's like falling off the couch. And it's got like... Jagged things in, mm-hmm. like what they're called, like like fins mm. going up it. And I go, and I, I see this big body, mm. right? And I go, and I look the other way, and there's an arm, but it's a foot, <laughs> it's a leg, mm. it's a back leg, and it's got like claws. Mm-hmm. It's like, it must be about the size of my hand. You know, like, just like, like the back foot of a, of a, of a, of a, uh, it was one of them, right? Mm-hmm. But it was bigger. And I'm like, I, you can imagine, I'll go, what the, f-? and I jump up and look, and I'm like, never. And across the whole length of this three-seater settee is this, what I can only describe, I've never seen anything like monster. it. What I can only describe is a Komodo dragon, right? <laughs> now, at this point, I don't know it's real. I just think it's just... Like a stuffed thing or something. Yeah, like a teddy bear, something like that. And I'm like, never that all, never that off it, that. Do you know, like, I'm like, wow. It's so real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're all laughing, they're all laughing. And I'm just thinking it's a fake thing. And I'm looking at it and I just see, as I'm looking at it, like smoking, I still haven't clicked, I just see it go. Oh <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, then all of a sudden my heart just goes... Doom. Like, you know, like my soul Left leaves body. me. And like the weed, the paranoia, the Fear. everything just rushes. Everyone's laughing. I feel sick. And I'm like looking around the room like, how many more? I think there? I'm in a nightmare. Because at first you're like, is this going to like, and I'm like, that's real. And they're like, yeah. And this guy gets up and strokes it. And as he strokes it, it starts like, you know, like, like not flinching, but like, you know, it's getting stroke. It. Yeah. yeah, acknowledging the stroke. And it's got like a big like fin <laughs> along the back. Jeez, little And I'm ways. like, oh my God. And it was the full length. I'm not kidding you. It was my hoose, It could have ate you. Probably from head 
to the bottom of its body, we're talking like four or five foot. Mm. And with its tail, I couldn't see the end of the tail. It went down to the floor. Flipping so from length. end of tail to head, we could be looking at like seven or eight foot. Jesus. It was massive. Honestly, I've never seen anything <laughs> like it. I've never seen anything like it since or before. I've only seen, I mean, to be honest, I've never seen an exact match of it on here, on the telly. I don't know what it was. I don't know what species it was. I don't know. Some form of hybrid. What I will what? say is it looked very unwell. What would you mm. feed something like that? I asked. I've, I've had salamanders. So, they're like two crickets a week. So I, that, 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 that's the only point in this thing I remember asking. What do you feed that? And he, coast to coast, was at the bottom of his yeah. street. And he said, I'd go and get rats and yeah. mice from there. And I'm like, huh. Man. Anyway, long story. And he said, it's sound. And then like after a few minutes, like... I, we just sat back on the couch and it was just for the next half an hour we, we talked smoked and like it got forgotten about <laughs> it was there it was just because they were just so like matter of fact Mark had met it loads of times do you know what I mean yes I knew it was there yeah and I, you know I got there or they forgot about it ah, you shit yourself there didn't you it's mental in it trippy in it and you know the first five minutes was acknowledging it then after that it was just oh we better go back to work blah 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 quick let's finish this let's go and we left oh my lord but yeah I remember as, as we left looking and like it was just with his eyes closed just Chilling. This <laughs> dragon. It was like clearly sizing you up trying to eat you. I mean, I don't think it could. But listen, I don't know what that was. But I think it was a dragon. <laughs> Probably was. Yeah. That's a real story. I've seen that. No, I know. I remember you telling me. I remember you being really freaked out because I kept yeah. saying, was it not a that's, chameleon? And you were like, that, no. That's what I mean no. with, the, that's what I mean with the dragons and even the giant humans. Over the, the course of the earth, we know the size of animals has got bigger and smaller as things have changed on the uh, environment's changed and the oxygen's changed and whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, that sort of three times the size could easily be a dragon, could it? Well, what made could me be. like um, really be determined on my theory to this level is when we were discussing how um, the voyagers and the the discovery people from way back when described an elephant. Yes, so I was reading. I was talking about um, old maps. Okay. And there's an old map of Africa, which shows that Cyclops live in what I call the armpit of Africa. Okay. It's not Cyclops. An elephant skull looks like it would be a Cyclops skull. So the explorers must have gone over there for the first time, seen these skulls on the floor and gone, oh my God, Cyclops must live here. And they've drawn pictures of Cyclops on the map to say, be careful, Cyclops lives here. What, like a one-eyed... If, if Southwark can get a picture of an elephant skull, you can see how they thought, oh shit, Cyclops must live here. But yeah, there's old, old maps of Africa have pictures of Cyclops to one explorers away. Am I correct in assuming that a Cyclops is a one-eyed If you figure? go one picture to the right, you'll see where they've... Th there's a good example there. Huh. Ah. So that's an elephant skull? Yeah. Yeah, so it looks there's, like so there's, old, there's old maps of Africa that sort of say, warning, Cyclops lives here. It's not. It's where they found the elephant skulls <gasps> in the desert. That does not and look that like a Cyclops, doesn't it? That is what's made me convinced that I'm right, that someone, that, that obviously just exaggerating and, and that's not also describing why I say it effectively. You should question everything, because if you're talking 14th century, you see that in a museum and go, oh yeah, Cyclops must live in Africa. You wouldn't argue with that, would you? You wouldn't Someone's like. bringing that back. If somebody <laughs> brought me that skull and said, yeah, there was such a thing as a Cyclops, yeah. he is its skull. This one I'm buying that. Question everything. I'm buying that. Yeah. That's real, as far as I'm concerned. That's real. That's and a that's Cyclops. That's terrifying. If you don't know what that belongs to, that is terrifying. That is terrifying. <laughs> If you someone said that that's that's a real thing, you would say, no, no, no. That's I'm not a horror Africa. movie. That. that lives there. No, you're not having that, are you? You're moving like. So now I want you to answer me again. Do you now think that dragons and dinosaurs are the same thing and that they were possibly, possibly still around in the medieval times when we've got drawings of such creatures that really these people shouldn't have even knew existed? You've sold me on the, I think, dragons and dinosaurs were the same thing. Mm. But I'd need further... Um, so these pictures, nudging. and obviously, as Rob said about the Welsh flag, and that being their min... And the Chinese calendar. And the Chinese calendar. Mm. Does that not make you think that well, they must have been around for someone to have drew these things? The Welsh flag and the Chinese calendar was made more than 800 years ago. True. So that's what I'm saying. But it wasn't made Which means millions even more of years ago. Real no, animal. but I think both of them were probably... Around if, if the Welsh Jesus flag was time, if the Welsh right? flag was made ten years ago, I'd say so. yes, it was based on a fictional creature, but it wasn't. It was made a lot longer than that. Huh. Well, that's quite a long Chinese time before Christ. Could be traced to the 14th century BC. That's be that's, that's like <laughs> that's fourteen thousand years ago. No, is that right? 
No, no 3,000. No, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, yeah. 3 and a half thousand years ago. Three and a half thousand years ago. Well, they time. reckon that dinosaurs <laughs> died oh, was millions of years ago. in 1959. Ago. And based on old royal badge used by British kings and queens since Tudor times. See? Tudor times. So mm. when was the dragon put on then? Because that, that's, that's it was officially adopted in 59. Well, mm. if it's saying the Tudor times, weren't the Tudors the 16, 17? The Red Dragon Assembly has been used in Wales since the reign of Cadwallader from around 655. There you go. So, so 700, it's about 14, 1400 years yeah. ago. Is that right? 1400 years ago? Yeah, 1400 years yeah. ago. So yeah, still, but yeah. that's still not millions and millions of years ago. <laughs> no, it's not. But I still think that dragons were um, mythical. I didn't realize the Welsh flag was that modern. No, the modern I, one. I assumed Wales had their own flag for a long time. Um, 59's really modern for a... How long has Wales been a country for? That's what I mean. I, I assumed that flag was ancient. I don't think Wales has been a country I've, for that I've long. Never, I've never asked when the Welsh flag was made was before. Say, I thought it'd be like... I'm the person who thinks um, dragons That's and wild. dinosaurs are the same thing. I wouldn't ask me. God. God. Um, what can I say? Yeah, look at 15th. that. 15th. Any the Earth's Act of Union. So it became a country in 1536 and got a flag in 1959. Bless them. Have I read, have I... No, that's not right. They've had a nightmare there. Well, the current <laughs> flag was 59 at least. <laughs> yeah, the current flag. Yeah. They'll have had one, won't they? They'll have had one. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. There's questions that we're not even asking that we don't know the answers yeah. to. <laughs> I'm not sold on dragons. Oh, I'm not so. Do you know what? Dragons. Every Christmas present you ever get now is going to be a <laughs> bloody dragon. I just think that... So... What isn't... Why? Why aren't you sold on it? I so give you facts. Do you not get filled with distrust when they say all the dinosaurs went extinct in this year and then the next breath they say sharks and crocodiles survived? So it wasn't all the dinosaurs then, was it? Stop no, it wasn't all the dinosaurs, no. And how have, they, how, how have they got the pictures of these people killing these apparent mythical creatures? Well, yeah, they're only drawings. They're only, you can do... A, there, there was lots of Lord of the Rings artwork before that was made into a big movie. Yeah. But we can't base my facts. No, 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 I rings. agree. No, and I mean, there's there's biblical artwork, isn't there? Be mm. Because cameras weren't around when I'm, Jesus was around. Right. Allegedly. I'm going to retire from my work. <laughs> I'm going to stand on high raw with my plinth and mm. my little sign saying dragons and dinosaurs yeah. are the same thing. And I will just bear everyone's wrath. So people are going to get off the station in Darlington for the first time. This is a little town. What's around? They're going to come up to the top of high row. And I'll see that man saying, Jesus can save you. And then I'll see the next man saying, Islam's the true religion. And then I'll see you saying, dragons existed. How do you feel about the... <laughs> Here's the thing, whilst we're touching on this, right? This this it's goes into this me. well. There's um, a documentary kicking about right. called... Dragons oh, are real? No, ancient <laughs> civilization. Basically, something like that. Yeah. And um, what it's banging on about, basically, and it makes some pretty valid points, or some pretty interesting points, which mm. is... It's basically around that there, we think that the, the world we live in now, I know you've heard of this before, I know you will have. <laughs> the world we live in now, we think we're the most civilised race of people that have ever existed. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's sort of known to be true, right? But when they look at these ancient pyramids, the Aztec Mayan stuff, the stuff in Egypt, shit like this, there seems to have been technology that we say they didn't have that mm. enabled them to make these things. If, if we say, oh, what did they have back then? They had pretty much hammer and chisel. That's what we're saying they had. That's what we believe. That's what we've yeah. been taught that they had. But some of the stuff, some of the stuff they found, ancient artifacts, uh, buildings, whatever, they've been cut and made to such high tolerances mm. that it would be impossible to do it with hand-eye coordination. Again, they don't tell us the truth about these things. Could you could South Paul get a clip of the giant steps in Peru? I want to say the official story behind these, because it goes to what you're saying about Bloody we're not told the real you story. Bloody hell, he's keeping you busy today, isn't he? Johnny's going to have a nightmare. <laughs> so, <laughs> the official story of these giant steps in Peru. Right. Just, just a picture's fine. Just a have picture's an image. Fine, is um, the, the man started building them. Right. And then when he was just about finished, he realised he got the dimensions wrong. What do you mean? He, he, oh, we're going to build a staircase up the mountain. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I start, I start on it, boss. And he starts chiseling away and putting the rocks in. And he gets to the top and goes, Ah, oh, I've made these stairs six foot tall and stairs six inches tall. Nah, bullshit. That's not the real story for those steps. And this is what I mean about we thought they had hammers and chisels back then. The Canada. Like, why, why were the pyramids built? Why were these steps built? That's, 
you don't build that many steps and then realise you're doing six foot instead of six inches. <laughs> you know. Have you heard the thing that in some of these places, like the Mayan ruins, I don't know which one it is, but there is, um, they know for a fact that there is material in these sites that came from the other side of the planet. Mm. Now, some of these rocks or things they found are so big and so heavy that you couldn't possibly move them across oceans mm. and continents by hand. But they have travelled that and distance. There's, there's also hieroglyphs showing helicopters and spacecraft. Mm. So we've there's definitely been ancient civilizations that could travel the world. So do you know, I, I am sold on this. I, mean, I don't know anything other than I think that that's, that w- what we're taught isn't true. I think that there has been an ancient civilization. Law, I mean, we're not talking hundreds of thousands. We're talking like, like tens of thousands of years. When the dinosaurs like, were around. Way back. Way back then. Mm. Somewhere, no, after dinosaurs. After dinosaurs, but nowhere near that there's any recollection of it. Because pretty much any any sort of like... I mean, look at this. The, the right-hand side of this picture here, right? Right. Tell me they ain't flying craft. There's yeah. a helicopter on the left... And, and that looks like a spaceship or a plane on the right. It does, like, it looks like a submarine or a boat or a yacht. What, what else could that possibly be for what we now believe the Egyptians had as their technology? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It don't make any sense. How are they getting rocks from one side of the planet to the other yeah. with hammer and chisel and men and ropes? How are they doing that? I think we're very, um, it's probably the right word, self-centred maybe, in thinking that we're the most advanced civilization that ever lived. Mm. I, I don't think that's right at all. And yeah, the, the things I've heard online is like, they just had different, like, all we know is like propulsion. That's how we'd get shit done. Mm. We use like fuel to power things to move things. Electric, yes. But what if they had like a different way of doing it? So, what so if they manipulated gravity? And we just haven't figured out that what, technology. One of the mysteries is how they move the, the big stone slabs about the pyramids, for example. Mm. Some people believe it's sound waves. Yeah, I've so heard some, this. some people believe that the right sound waves, you can literally levitate the stone and push it into position. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I believe that personally, but although I've heard a lot of people talking about that. Well, there's a I mean, you know, I've heard people make a case for the manipulation of gravity that yeah. you can it, you know, there is I don't know anything about it, but all we understand in our in our like world is all we understand is what there is for us to understand. How long do you so you've seen how quickly buildings and civic projects happen nowadays, right? Yeah. How long do you think it would take a modern construction firm to build one of the Great Pyramids? I don't know. After what? their six months health and safety consultation <laughs> and two years trying to get planning permission for the ground and then sourcing the materials from the cheapest bidder. Oh, would be a right chew. And even then it'd need redo in again, It'd be it? three years before they laid the first brick down nowadays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, we, we, and we think they did that with logs and hammers and chisels. Nah, no way. Doesn't make any sense, does it? And it's mad, isn't it, how we're all just sort of taught what we're taught at school and like, that's it, we just go with it. Oh, they made it with that. Okay, cool. Here's one for for what we got taught at school changing. We were taught at school that Columbus discovered America. Yes. And what he did is he went west, trying to find a way around the earth to get to the East India. Right. And he hits these islands and goes, I made it. I'll call them the West Indies. Mm. Because I've approached India from the east, so this is West India. Okay. Oh, yeah. They have found Viking and Roman artefacts in America. And I was watching some real mainstream history documentary on YouTube a few weeks ago. And they said, when the Vikings first came to America, and went, wow, that's that's now the mainstream knowledge, is it? When huh? when did that change what we're teaching kids in school? Vikings didn't get to America, but, did yeah, they? Yeah, they found Roman and Viking artefacts in America. But we what? were taught at school that it was Columbus centuries later. Yeah. But apparently they're now teaching the Vikings were there first. So they're slowly... They're changing what they teach kids with, like, no new evidence. They just, let's change the story on that one. Let's just change the story. Because that never made sense to me in school. Columbus thought he'd hit the east of India, so he named the islands West Indies. <laughs> yeah. Even in, like, year five at school, I was like, you what? Yeah. He was a clever man to say all that far, and he thought he'd... What? No, that doesn't work. <laughs> can you imagine being Christopher... Can you imagine being back then, right? You had no technology... You were literally, you've never, yeah, you don't actually know where you're going. Mm. You just have it in your head. You just think, you're just pretty sure that you keep going, you're going to get somewhere. You get on a boat that's got no power. You've got nothing but the wind, right? You've got no engine. You've got you, the wind, and a load of men. And you're just going out into the sea, see you later, and you're just confidently sailing, and don't worry, we'll be fine. Like, you haven't got unlimited food. So, like... That bravery. Can can you imagine doing that? Like... The, the early explorers are so brave. Or mental. Yeah. There's, there's like maps from the 15th century that show Antarctica. 
Hmm. How brave must you have been to go on a boat in the 15th century and discover Antarctica? Just a bit of thing about. <laughs> and and then find it, like, And it must have been getting so cold as you approach. Before you see the land, it must be really cold. Oh, before know. you can see the land. And at what point we'll do you think going. I've gone far enough? Yeah. yeah, we'll keep going, yeah. We'll just I'd keep going. I'd be like, turn around now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you do. would be. That's the, the bravery is unbelievable. Yeah. I can't imagine being that brave. No. <laughs> Oaks, you're a bit of a wimp, aren't you? No. <laughs> no, it does make you think like they were just a bit of different they're, they're, stuff. They're trying to get the first people to go and colonise Mars, aren't they? And like, <laughs> even, even that's not as brave because you know Mars is there. You've got an estimate of how long it's going to take to get there because you can see it through a telescope. Mm. Mm. So even that's less brave than sailing around the world is Mars flat? into nothingness. Does Mars even exist? Does Mars even exist? <laughs> is it flat? You know, is it a myth? Don't encourage him. I'm just asking, you know, <laughs> if we're flat. Low Earth orbit, yeah. I mean, look at them boats there. Look at the state of them. Yeah. He's getting on a wooden vessel with the wind. I mean, how long does it take nowadays to sail across the Atlantic? You're talking... Weeks. Weeks nowadays. With engines. Yeah. And you've got your GPS, you can you know where you are. Scary. <laughs> it's scary shit, right? Probably brave souls. It's that little uh, that little long boat then, and you, that one even there. Like the, the, what do you think? That's that's Norway people used to come over. What were they? Vikings. Vikings. They've, they've, they've got the sun and the stars. They know they're going west. Yeah. But like how far? Uh, how, how long do you keep going west before that, you just give up and turn around? That's what gets me. They didn't know what was there. Mm. Like at what point when you're weeks and weeks in, right, you're running out of scran. Right. You don't actually know if there's anything there. Yeah. Mm. And like people are saying, like, Chris, like, like, listen, listen, <laughs> Chris. Pal, right? I was all for it. Like, we've got a few days of food left. Like, we're getting hungry. Like, people are dying. Like, people are going rad. We've been seasick for two months. Like, should what's we plan well, yeah. so What's your plan here? So, so you're traveling with four years worth of food. Yeah. You get to two years in and think, right, I've got to make a decision now. Do I turn around and go back home? Yeah. Or do I keep going? Yeah. Because if I carry on now, I haven't got enough food to get back home. Yeah, they'd reach a point where you've got to keep going. Why wouldn't they know how to fish? Do they know what fish is there? Oh, yeah, yeah they could fish. Why, why wouldn't they know to fish? Surely they've been around the sea and they'd just fish. So I'm not a sailor. I didn't think of that. Yeah, I didn't think of that either. A fish. It's fish. No water, Honestly. though, is there? No drinking water. And yet, oh, you know. Yeah. No, you can boil it, though. You can boil seawater to drink, right? Oh, God, no. Yeah, yeah. you go to salt out. It's the salt that's the problem. It's I'm pretty sure water. if you boil salt water, it becomes drinkable. Are we not just lick no, a fish? <laughs> that, that concentrates the salt. Because mm. you evaporate no. some of the water and you keep all the salt in the pot. Rain. It'll rain. You just gather the rainwater. Not in the middle She's of the Caribbean, it She's clever. Oh, oh my God, God, I'm clearly a survivor. You two, you're going to be dead. Don't yeah. you poo-poo my little idea that dragons and dinosaurs are real? Because I'm telling you now, right? I'm going to survive you know out on that boat. I've always thought my zombie apocalypse plan is bulletproof, but now I'm like, maybe I should just follow yours. I think you should. And I've said to you over and over again, when your solo zombie apocalypse plan, I've been like, uh, and yeah. when do you come and pick me up? I'm surviving, when, mate. When you're I'm on your own. Food. <laughs> I'll come and find you when I've had enough. Well, listen, I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. This has been a break from the norm. It's been too short. I've, I've enjoyed this. Yeah, listen, this, this is the first of many. Because this is stuff we've got to pick back up. I'd love to get into depth, like properly dive into some of these subjects with you sometimes. Oh, mate, next time, for the people that are watching, we have other things to go into here. I had gender. I had kids being called rocking horses. I, we had it all, all to go through. Listen, let, let, let's make a pact now that in the coming weeks, we're going to recall this mm -hmm. because this has not been finished. Let's call this Amy and Rob. Part one. But let's see how quickly we can get ourselves cancelled. Yeah, let's. <laughs> Rumble, we're with you. Anyway, that's the end of that. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. It was amazing. Me. People like us, Amy and Rob, jobs are good. Thank you. Over and out. <laughs>